Have a great day, guys. We'll see you Monday. today. Good morning, everybody. Oh, this is an excited bunch. So much good stuff coming up this fall. Let's kick it off, guys. Are you ready? <laughs> Welcome to today. We're so happy that you're joining us. You can't spend your whole time mm. trying to run another country by proxy. Do you believe schools should mandate the vaccine? I believe everybody who's eligible to be vaccinated should get vaccinated. We are going to reflect on the extraordinary life and career of our friend Willard Scott. Obviously, we want to remember all those amazing people who are lost, but let's celebrate them. You guys have new neighbors up in space. We did see them for just a few seconds. Zero gravity is where things really take off. Look, Ma, no hand. And last night, quite the show. We have got to see this. <laughs> Wrong way back! Akuna. Nutella. Don't adjust your tongue. You're so obsessed with me. Are you guys seeing this? Oh. Donna Rama. All right, Donna, who are we playing for? I know this is so boring and you can cut this out, but. Give it up, the one and only Keith Urban. This is today on NBC. Wee! September sure was a busy month here in Studio 1A. We covered so much, so we thought, why not bring you behind the scenes to let you in on the TV magic? So over the next half hour, in what we're calling the making of today, we're going to pull back the curtain, which <laughs> sounds odd, and show you how the big moments on the broadcast come together each morning. And what better place than to start on the Great White Way, Broadway. After 18 months of theaters being dark, Broadway is back, and today was part of the Great White Way's big reopening. We lifted the curtain at three different shows and made it all come together for the next morning. So how did it all happen? Check it out. Hey guys, look what we're doing. We're behind the scenes. We're taking you right behind the scenes of Broadway. Broadway. It's Let's so go. much fun. Backstage, Yay! all of it. Broadway is back, baby, and we got to be there for a very exciting moment. Are you ready? Are you ready? Along with our cameras, producers, and a few special guests. What do you say about Broadway? As Hoda and Savannah waited for their first interview at Wicked, Can I do the witches first? Savannah and daughter Vale entertained the team. With their lyrics memorized, they were ready to interview the real Glinda and Elphaba until New York City sounds got in the way. How do you feel, girls? Oh my gosh. Well, that's a New York welcome right there. That is how we feel. Ah, all the things you don't see on TV. Meanwhile, my producer, Erica Glass, set up with our crew at Hamilton. So just to catch you up on what we're doing, we were just here for the hamper ham, they have a ticket lottery that happens before each show, so we shot that. Now we're just waiting for Alan Craig to get here, and we're just setting up. There's lights, there's sound, there's cameras, we're ready. And with that, we hit the ground running, interviewing. Are you excited? Yeah! And making jokes with the fans outside. Al Roker tonight is Hamilton. Wow, that would be amazing. No, no, <laughs> I'm breaking news to you, like, this is epic. After no one believed that, we went to the theater balcony for more interviews where I had a surreal moment of my own. Just for a moment, you know how few people have been up on the marquee of the Richard Rogers Theater. It gets no better this than This is, that. wow! Hamilton's back. Woo! New York City's back. Broadway's Look at all these back. people. They're streaming. Oh! I mean, the yes! Are you ready? My people! My people! There is part of that. My people! Oh, I love this country. Anticipation for the show building is our cameraman, Bill Angelucci, capturing it all. Here we are, getting ready to go here. And as we signed off at Hamilton... Got the ticket, got the playbill, got a Hamilton fizz. Woohoo! Broadway's back, baby. Jenna and Carson were just getting started at The Lion King. Akuna Matata. Akuna Matata. Akuna, Akuna Matata. Matata. Right? 
Hakuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase. With producer Christine Morea taking charge. What do we do here? Oh, we're just a little stand up, like. The Lion King, we're getting ready to open. We're about okay. to open the doors. Can't wait. Okay. We are here at the Lion King, Minskoff Theater, New York. Our crew filming every moment as Jenna and Carson pumped up the crowd and kept them hyped as they walked through those famous doors. Enjoy the show! Have fun, everybody. Get some popcorn. And Broadway's back! Yeah! Broadway's back! And with that, Broadway was officially open. Who's gonna know your name? What's your name, man? Alexander. But it doesn't mean our work is done. We are loading our footage that we just shot at The Lion King. I'm going to rush it over to 30 Rock after this where another producer will then screen and write this. And then we have a team of two producers who are cutting this overnight to air tomorrow. So it takes a village. Christine gets the footage to producer Kate Redding who edits through the night. It is 2.45 in the morning. The shows have long ended and all the crowds have gone home. But now it's my turn to do my job. I'm working with another producer and two editors we are all working together. We have this script. We've got about five hours until this is going to be on the air. Making it all come together. Last night, we all had the honor of helping reopen the doors on the Great White Way. With the best team in the business. Every day, our team proves what it looks to be like defying gravity. Up next, we're going to do that literally. Join me and our crew as we talk about taking flight in zero gravity. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Hey everybody, it's Hoda Kotb from the Today Show. I am so, so excited to tell you about my new podcast, Making Space with Hoda Kotb. I sit down with some incredible people and we'll hear some uplifting stories. Listen to Making Space now on Apple Podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Does the White House think they have an Afghanistan problem or a COVID problem? Do you believe the abortion issue should reflect the will of the people or the will of the elected officials? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. You may have seen my flight of a lifetime in zero gravity, a trip some 30,000 feet above the ground that affords you a weightless experience without leaving Earth. And as it's about weightlessness, I'm all for it. I caught up with our crew after to find out how they made this story soar. On TV, my flight in zero gravity may have looked effortless. Look, Ma, no hands. But for the crew behind the camera, this unique and weightless journey was a heavy lift. How'd you get the assignment? It kind of fell in my lap maybe two days before we actually got on the plane. I just got a call from my senior producer and said, hey, do you want to go in to a zero G flight without Roker? And when you get a question like that, you don't say no. It normally takes a couple of weeks at least of planning. Here you had two days. What went into that? You might not know this, but we weren't actually cleared to get on the plane until about 30 minutes before you arrived. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it really came down to the wire there. Once on board, our next concern, motion sickness, especially since flights like these have been dubbed vomit comets. I was surprised that they said most cameramen get sick. If any of us get sick, the shoot's ruined. Forget about the shoot being ruined, the flight's ruined. The, yeah. Not and, to and mention our flight suits. Exactly, exactly. And I don't think anybody wants to puke on Al Roker. Or does Al so, Roker want to puke on anybody else? Well, I mean, then I think we just have to sit back and deal with it. You're making me nauseous, actually. Yeah. Pushing over, zero one. As it turns out, floating in zero gravity is surprisingly chaotic. When I thought, OK, Al's going to go weightless, it didn't register in my mind that I'm also going to be weightless. 
suddenly I'm floating too. <laughs> it just turns the whole thing on its head, literally. My view of the cameramen floating around and watching them struggle was just very funny. It was difficult for them to actually do their job to begin with because they can't really look at what they're shooting. They're just kind of pointing it in your direction and hoping for the best. And because the plane flies in waves, we had less than 30 seconds at a time to make weightless magic. This panic sets in that I have 30 seconds to capture this and I can't control my body right now. This is one of those where you think you can prep, but no one can actually tell you what you need or what you can experience. Did I mention the roar of the plane kept us from hearing each other? Mic drop! I didn't hear anything he said the entire time we were in that airplane. It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! So at that moment, I have no idea he's saying that, but his commentary was great. Are you happy with the way the, the piece turned out? I love the piece. I think it's great. One of the things that I wanted to put in was that the first hour of the flight is a totally normal flight. I sat down and I knocked out uh, because that's what I do when I fly. That is another thing that I wanted to mention in this spot. And I just wasn't sure, honestly, if you were going to be OK with me telling people that you fell asleep on the flight. Because I just thought, again, going back to how normal this thing is, like Al Roker fell asleep, like he was totally zenned out. Glad I had our crew along for that out of this world experience. But you know who was really floating on cloud nine for one assignment? Our own Chanel Jones. Earlier this month, Chanel was able to talk to stars at the Met Gala. Here's her behind the seams look at fashion's biggest night. Set it with nearly as many stars that light up the night sky, the Met Gala shines bright as celebrities showcase their stellar looks on the red carpet. And I got the chance to greet them with that question we all want answered. Can you tell us who you're wearing? Tell us who you're wearing. Tell us who you're wearing. But not far from those world famous steps of New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art, my Monday began just like any other at 30 Rockefeller Plaza. Good morning and welcome to the third hour of today on this Monday, September 13th, and we a date I had circled on my calendar for weeks. So I just finished third hour today. And now it is Met Gala time, so I've got my hair out. We're gonna do something fun. Um, shall we start the journey? Let's do it. I'm with Bianca. She's doing my hair, say hi. So we are walking to the car. We're gonna go to my house and get ready. Um, I feel like, am I nervous? I don't know if I'm nervous. I don't know how to, not I don't know how to describe what I'm feeling, but. Um, excited. Excited, okay, yay, exciting. We're back in the corner of my living room, in the back of the house. Um, so shall we begin? Yes. After two hours in hair and makeup, my glam squad worked its magic. And I had a trick of my own, mixing couture with a little bit of comfort as I made my way to the Met. I literally had to bring flip-flops and walk because traffic is so bad. <laughs> so across the street, I'm changing into my heels. And true story, Kathy Lee Gifford did one of them. She gave it to me. Of course, I couldn't cover fashion's biggest night without an entourage of my own. A crew led by veteran Today Show producer Yael Federbush. So I'm super excited. I'm going to the Met Gala. I'm on my way. In her more than 20 years with Today, Yael has traveled the world, meeting some famous faces along the way. But she'd never covered a red carpet event until now. We have to check in and show our COVID vaccine cards and um, get cleared for our credentials. We waited behind the scenes with all the reporters for about an hour or so, and now we're all going in one at a time into the tent. Let's do it. Once inside, we quickly took a look around before cramming into our designated space. Corralled next to other media outlets, I had some time to catch up with a friend. I'm talking to my friend Joelle, <laughs> who's across the way before the heels came off once again. Ah, oh my God, so much better. Then some last minute accessories for our setup. Just a trip to Michael's, no big deal. Watch this, sister. Oh. <gasps> Woo! Fancy, fancy. <laughs> Life in a fishbowl as the guests began pouring in. With the party officially started, it was up to me to get the attention of each celebrity. You were my inspiration tonight. I can't 
kid you not. Oh my gosh. I hope I did you proud. No, you did. I literally, I, did I hope you did I did you proud. A fangirl moment from an unforgettable night. I couldn't wait to share with today's show viewers the next morning. It was my first time covering the Met Gala at the Metropolitan Museum of Art here in New York City. It really was a good time. Ms. Jones, thanks so much for letting us in on the secrets on how all that came together. Coming up, we're going to give away some set secrets through a tour of Studio 1A. Don't go away. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the storm, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, oh. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Here in our house, Studio 1A, we're going to give you insider access by taking you on a tour of our set. And I got to tell you, this correspondent is, is one of my all-time favorites. Me. This is my favorite part of the studio. Uh, it's, we call it the data wall. This is where I do uh, all my weather. We actually ended up going to Best Buy, and uh, it was fantastic. Got this deal. No, we didn't really. It's very special. It's, and I just kind of touch it, and boom! We got it for the election last year. This is far bigger than what Steve Kornacki has. Kornacki's got screen envy. All right, he's got the fancy khakis, but he doesn't have this. That's right. We can just do it, and we can put anything in here, but it, it really is terrific. So every morning before 7 a.m., I meet with our, our climate unit to discuss what we're going to share on the broadcast, and then uh, we go over the graphics, and, and I've got the, this great team of folks, uh, Don Sunikas, uh, Catherine Prosev, Brian Van Aken, uh, usually from day to day, that come up with these graphics and, and design it, and, and we've got a lot of action and color. It's, it's really fantastic. Uh, and I can change them like this, or uh, I can have uh, Don Sunikas, who's usually in there, uh, change it like that. Boom. And so it's like it's like magic. Uh, here's a fun fact. Uh, Studio 1A is also now home to NBC Nightly News. And guess what? Lester Holt is actually paying me. That's right. I'm making some long green from a long Lester. I love it. All right. Now, our, our show's been in Studio 1A since 1994. We love the space, but we actually like you. We go through some renovations every few years. That's right. Uh, we started at the beginning of the month. The contractors disappeared for five months, uh, and then when they brought the cabinets in, they didn't fit. Uh, we got this new desk. Uh, it used to be a huge oval, but now it's a little uh, semi-circle. And it, here's the thing. We've got little monitors in here that uh, we can uh, pick up. We, we can watch Peacock or anything during the show. It's great. Uh, we also redid our floors. Now, we do have uh, some wood paneling, uh, but we also have this white kind of marbled look. And, and you may remember, for those of you who uh, have that memory, our floor rotates. Oh, Gerard, could you start? Gerard's one of our, our main stage folks. Uh, the, the floor rotates. Look at that. Hey, this is fantastic. I'm just going to stay here. Here's a fun fact. 
Gerard could actually get this thing up to about 50 miles an hour. And people just start flying off. Whoever is able to hang on gets to actually keep their job. Come here, come here, come here. This is the part you don't really see. This is, this is, uh, okay, that's, that's Gerard and, and who, who actually spins the monitor. Uh, there's uh, uh, Zach, who's our stage manager. And back there, that's Nate Congleton. Photo Nate, you might recognize him. He takes all the pictures. Uh, he's taking one right now. How, how meta is that? We're taking a picture of, of Nate taking a picture of us. It's a, hey, Gerard, spin this bad boy one more time. I love it. Here we go. I'm putting on my top hat. I love this. All right. Well, we got to get out of here. So we'll see you a little later. Oh, I had so much fun on that spinning floor. Uh, you know who else has a fun spin on things? Why, Hoda and Jenna, especially when they're making TikTok videos. They're on the TikTok. Social contributor Donna Farrison helped the ladies rack up more than 11 million views on their account. So what goes into the making of a viral video? See for yourself. Hey everybody, Donna here in Studio 1A, and I'm going to take you behind the scenes at how I help Hoda and Jenna make their TikToks every day. So come follow me. Hoda, guess what? What? We have our own TikTok page! Okay, do you guys remember when we first launched our TikTok? Yes. What was your first reaction? What? <laughs> we haven't said that in a while. Well, you know what? We kind of thought we were hitting, we were getting cool. It was happening. We were hip. Both uh -huh. of us were like uh -huh. boot looking to see what yeah. the dance is. Yeah, and we were shaking our <laughs> booties. And we just fell off the chair. To get inspo and see what's trending, I scroll through TikTok every night to see what might work for the ladies. Some of my favorite TikToks to make are with the celebs we have in our studio. Most recently, Addison Ray. Two, one. Why are you so obsessed with me? Oh no. Okay, first stop in my pitch process to the ladies is doing it right now, three minutes before air. Let's see if we have time. Oh yeah. I love her. No, we can be her. We could do her. Wow. Swipe to the next one. Okay, that looks more involved. Hold on. Yeah. Boom. So basically you can choose your rendition. I like I think the, the first one. Yeah, I think the first one too. <laughs> okay, I'm in the green room now and neither Hoda, Jenna, nor I are particularly great dancers. On a scale of one to 10, how would you rate your choreographed dancing? Zero. Oh, you're not giving us a four? <laughs> four, four. Wait, wait, four, four you have to have rhythm. one for effort. Okay, one. I'm gonna try out the TikTok dance that I want them to do first, just to, you know, play fair. So, right after my segment, it's time to film the TikTok. Let's do it. So, I'm going to do a countdown clock. So, you're going to hear three, two, and one. The booty's like crazy. Yeah, crazy. Um, start, wait. Okay, three, two, one. Really yeah, terrible. the Hoda and Jenna spin to it. How do you guys feel about doing that TikTok? Well, uh, one thing I know without looking at it, we're ridiculous <laughs> and embarrassed. I felt, yeah, embarrassed, I felt old, I felt like a hag. <laughs> no, you did not. No! This movie. 15. <laughs> What do you guys think about the TikTok process in general? Are you into it? Or are you over it? No, we like TikTok. We like it. We don't understand it still. <laughs> we like it, and we feel like we have lots of content that no one's interested in. <laughs> so, by the way, we keep putting out content. Tell the people now. What do they follow us? What's on us? Who are we talking to? <laughs> Hey, should I join TikTok? Well, I don't know. I, I still have to get on that worldwide interweb thing. Anyway, coming up, I'm going to answer some of your questions after the break. Controversy in South Lake tonight after teens posted a racist video. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. My children were told Rosa Parks is dead. You all have to sit in the back of the bus. But when the school board presented its plan, this small town fight ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative of rampant racism. Shame. 
This is Southlake, an NBC News podcast. All episodes available now. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, everybody, it's Hoda Kotb from The Today Show. I am so, so excited to tell you about my new podcast, Making Space with Hoda Kotb. I sit down with some incredible people, and we'll hear some uplifting stories. Listen to Making Space now on Apple Podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. (laughs) Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. But when the school board presented its plan, it ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative. Shame. This is Southlake. All episodes available now. Welcome back. We've given you an inside look at what goes on behind the scenes. Now it's time to dive into a look behind my routines in a little segment we're calling... Ask it all. I'm answering viewer questions, and nothing is off the table. Hmm. How many pairs of glasses do you have? The internet is obsessed with Al Roker's new glasses. I've got about 10 pair, I think. My old ones, these were the old aviator glasses. Does anything say hipness more? Your glasses are ridiculous. (laughs) You and Deborah both work in the industry. How do you lean on each other professionally? When we first met, we were both here at NBC. Very soon after, she left to go to ABC. I think we've each made each other better. So I've helped her find her inner lightness, and she's helped me be a little more serious. Like right now, I'm not wearing pants, and she told me to do that. I never get to really see Deborah Roberts at work. I've never gotten to see her do a live shot before. Oh my gosh, I saw it (laughs) over there. Bye-bye. Uh, winds of 150 miles per hour. Wind on location, covering extreme weather. How do you stay safe and get the job done? We have an amazing crew. They know what to bring. They know where to set up so that we maximize our safety. Don't you wish you had your weight back? Right about now, I do. Oh. Hey, Al. For as long as you've worked here, what is the one thing that you are most grateful for about your job? I am grateful for this job. Coming to you on a dusty road. All you do is add weight. So it means something like this. (laughs) Al, you're an icon. Of all the places you've traveled throughout the years, what's been your most favorite? I've been to Greenland, I've been to Iceland, we've been to Japan, we've been to China, we've been to Russia. I love them all. There's always something great about those places, especially when you get to meet folks, different cultures and and different foods. And yet, the thing that still brings us together is that I think we're, we're still very similar, that we still love our families, we still love our food, and we like meeting new people. off in the morning what are the first three things you do i guess you can figure out one you can probably figure out the second i talk to my meteorologist don sunikas and and get the forecast and then we work on that and then i go downstairs and we go over the graphics and depending on how long the first two take then i go to work here's what's happening in your neck of the woods We hope you'll keep those questions coming because good news, the making of today will air on our Today All Day streaming channel every month. Is that a good thing? Well, you decide. If you want more behind-the-scenes access to today, sign up for Today Insider. You'll get a weekly email that includes early access to steals and deals, giveaways, and so much more. Just head to today.com slash insider. Now, if you thought September was busy, get ready for October. And if you think October is going to be busy, November is going to be off the chain. We'll take you along for the ride as we prep for International Day of the Girl, our Halloween extravaganza, and so much more. Until then... See you then.
Thank you for doing this, Diane. Great to see you. Thank you for having me. Thank you I, for letting me do this with you. I was just telling you, I just got finished with episode two of okay. Why the Last Man. Okay. It's a great premise to begin with. You're fantastic in it. Thank you. And I'm curious what you thought when this sort of idea came to you, just the concept and we're going to do a series about it. Uh -huh. Were you immediately interested or did you need some explaining? Well, I thought... You're asking me to, oh, and now for something completely <laughs> different, you know, which is sort of fun because that's what I do. I get to try on different ideas and that was what attracted me, was the, was the amount of zeitgeisty, controversial, global world building, world recovering uh, issues and who knew how much uh, life was going to be sort of brushing up very closely against art, or maybe the other direction, art against life. He's whining about the First Amendment and calling for- Unity, yes. Let's all join hands with the psychotics of America. And what would the expectations be placed upon um, a different gender of leadership? So it was almost like, I think he, maybe he was triggered by somebody saying, oh, if the, if the world were only led by women. Right. And then you think, well, let's, let's dig into that a little bit. What would it be like? So that's the, the journey we take in a quote unquote woman only world uh, after the demise of 50% of the population of the Y chromosome. You're doing everything you can for everyone you can. But ma'am, without men, there is no future. I hear you, but we're just trying to survive the present. You know, we call it men and, and, the, and the title of course says why the last man. So it's not a big surprise. It's not a uh, spoiler alert, but um, there's double entendres even on the title. Why? Well, what does that mean? Well, why is the first letter of, the, of, of my son's name? Oh, so your son survives, so not every man. And, and uh, what is a man, by the way? Mm. How do we delineate what that term, gender roles, and what, what, what do we delineate uh, by how would a woman behave in a leadership role? Would she be up to the task? But I wanted to be part of a world building show and see where it was gonna lead because there's so, so much great source material in the, in the graphic novels. Like I say, I'm two episodes in and I still have so many questions that I know you're not gonna give away today. What is this thing? What exactly happened? How did your son survive? There's right. so much in the air still that will carry through the length of the series. Um, I was interested to read that this was your first series as a re series regular mm -hmm. where you're leading the show, which I thought, She's, she's done a bunch of TV and a bunch of film, but she's never done this. Was there some appeal to doing, okay, this streaming thing that everyone's on and I'm the lead and we can see this through a bunch of episodes to tell a story, much different than making a film, obviously. Well, I'm a sucker for a dare. <laughs> I, I, I can own that. And, and I wanted the, the, the experience of um, f t doing something completely different in my craft, which a lot of people have become extremely comfortable with, and that is not knowing what the writing is that you're setting right. yourself up to fulfill. One of the things that I love to do is to look at work in terms of the conversations that grow out of what were you thinking when you took this role? Why this, why now? Um, and this was, it's so complicated to answer this question, but it's also very timely because of the many things that have occurred in the world. I mean, when I read this originally, well, first of all, I have Googled how many women have portrayed the US president. I had to do it. I was like, so I, apparently I'm number 18. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and our 18th president. We are going to have to keep making hard choices to try to help deal with the panic and the outrage. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I have some very dear friends who have already portrayed this character, I mean, whatever we have in our mind's eye of the, the leader of the most important leader of the free world and all of those, um, you know, self, self aggrandizing and rightfully so, uh, the role of president of the United States has been a very big trigger point for a lot of people for a long mm -hmm. time. And um, I, suffice it to say that when I was describing to people when we were shut down in the pandemic and we were dealing with so many changes in the world, um, glo global, and 
and yet also very sort of tethered to who is president and what that looks like. And what does that say about our country? Yeah, I mean, this was, as you say, written. These are based on books for people who don't know after 9-11. I think the first one came out in 2002, mm -hmm. and then there were more after that. But my gosh, it's about a pandemic. There are echoes of what happened in this country on January 6th oh, of yes. civil society oh, sort yes. of disintegrating before well, our the eyes. Frame. The yeah. frame changes the, the art always. You yep. can put a piece of art, or what, even if it's not art. If you frame it in a certain way, people will say, well, that's art. It's easier sometimes to portray somebody who's re really existed in history. And then you can say, well, she did it. I'm, 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 right. I'm portraying something that really happened. And this seemed so far-fetched. So um, to play the president confronting it was very prescient, very zeitgeisty, yes. even more than I bargained for <laughs> when I signed on. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. But when the school board presented its plan, it ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative. Shame. This is Southlake. All episodes available now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey everybody, it's Hoda Kotb from The Today Show. I am so, so excited to tell you about my new podcast, Making Space with Hoda Kotb. I sit down with some incredible people and we'll hear some uplifting stories. Listen to Making Space, now on Apple Podcasts. Does the White House think they have an Afghanistan problem or a COVID problem? Do you believe the abortion issue should reflect the will of the people or the will of the elected officials? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What did you want to bring to um, a representation of a woman being president? Because this is, there she is standing. Well, I'm wearing my patriotic colors. Yes, I noticed that. Very nice. It. Well, of course, the humanity of it, yeah. uh, the shared experience of it. Uh, the, this, the line of succession was decimated by the amount of death and, and the amount of grieving that she has. In order to be a good leader, you have to be the best follower, in a way. So she wasn't chosen, she wasn't voted in. So there's a lot of controversy around inheriting the job that she wasn't voted for, you know? Right. And so, hey, that's prescient too this year. Uh, voting became very important and uh, the controversy around our votes uh, considered authentic. Uh, the process, once you begin to have doubt enter into that conversation, now you've tilted the conversation into what is reality? The inner journey of this woman who is struggling to lead while she knows she's violated her ethics in order to do what's right for the world, which is if you have a survivor, don't you want to try to make it possible for there to be more than just one survivor? You've spent a bunch of time in the halls of Congress as an activist, and I want to talk to you about that in just a moment. But a small I, bunch, but yeah, legally, but I mean, yes, you, I have been to the halls of Congress. You've been, yes, you have. <laughs> There's photos, so I, could, yes, I know there it really are. did happen. I've seen them. Okay. Um, in my day job, I cover politics, and just the way you sort yes, of you carry did. yourself, yes, some Nancy Pelosi and the way you walk down, down the hall and you're surrounded by your staff and your reporters. Did you, your relationships with people who serve, did that, did you bring some of that to understand what it means to be in a position of power politically? I have enough audacity to, uh, to, to, to bring the little things that I believed in to, to the Congress people who were willing to meet with me and uh, talk about the issues. And, and those were conservation issues about, about our, the health of our oceans at that point. There's always some legislation right, right. That, needs, that needs help to get the ear of the people who actually turn these things into law. 
That was my secret ambition when I was a child, was to become a, a lawyer who could help make laws. We need laws to catch up to the reality of our, of our, of our planet. We only have one. When you do go to Capitol Hill and you knock on the door of Congress people, <laughs> do you find they're at least more aware of the problem? Are they more receptive to it? It doesn't feel like some radical tree-hugging idea anymore that like the middle of the country understands that mm -hmm. this is a problem because it's happening in front of our eyes. This is science and this is real and people need to survive and live. And people are scared of the conversations. So you've got, you've got a lot of fans who listen to you. Mm. What, what would you say to them? about what we need to do different day to day. Forget the big macro, but uh -huh. how, how, do we, how do we make a dent in this as we go about our lives? Well, I mean, I didn't bring my book. I was, <laughs> I was going to bring it and show it to you. It's called What Can We Do? Actually, it's called What Can I Do? And it's Jane Fonda's book. Mm -hmm. And it's all about her uh, experiences going out of her comfort zone and allowing her fame to mean something on this planet while she's here. And she wants us to all wake up and do what we can. And people are panicked and they don't say, what can I do? So she literally goes through. She's so practical. That's what I love about Jane, <laughs> among many things I love about Jane. So sure, I went and got arrested for the cause of bringing attention to the conversation. But the conversation is manifold. It's not just recycle or get the plastics out of the ocean or we have species that are leaving. And right. Everybody gets so scared. They want to go hide under the table and have a cocktail. So do I. But is it going to be our children? So I, I want us to wake up together and hold hands and make it a positive movement. That's my dream. I think one reason for optimism is that I have a 12-year-old and a 14-year-old who were born into and are growing up in a world where, to them, climate change is a fact. It's not a theory. Yeah. And it's what they're taught, yeah. and they see it more on the news than certainly you or I did growing up. it's not been politicized. It hasn't right. been politicized They said, well, yes, this is happening. Here's what, what needs to happen. So yeah. maybe that's one reason for optimism is this generational turnover. Yeah. But they don't have to be convinced of it, Right. most of them anyway. Right. One thing Jane pointed out, and it's, been, it's true, is that they make the individual feel bad, but they're supplying us with plastic everything. So we have to revisit and make things so they could be reusable and share more and include more people in our family, I think. And now I'm going to yeah. run for office. Since I was going to say, this is it. This is your campaign launch right here. I'll vote for you. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. <laughs> in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right, I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. But when the school board presented its plan, it ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative. Shame. This is Southlake. All episodes available now. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Today. Let's go. Is the Delta variant more dangerous to kids, or is it simply more transmissible? Maryland's principal of the year. I served an amazing group of staff and students. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. I didn't realize until you walked in here, but we are surrounded right now by Diane Lane memories. 
I West. mean, where should we begin midtown as you look girl. out these windows? Somebody had to get raised in the Midtown, <laughs> right? I went to PS 59, which is on 57th Street. It's the heart of Midtown to me. And, and of course, it's a Whole Foods now. <laughs> There's so much I could say about that. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so that's the building where I had my first audition. It was the Gulf and Western building. When I say first audition, of a job I got, there were plenty of auditions that I've had that I've completely blocked out because who wants to remember those? <laughs> those don't count. But this is a little romance, your a little first romance, film. 1978. Delightful spot, but uh, hardly the top of the diplomatic ladder. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. What an incredible life you must have had, Monsieur Santorin. Oh, please, Julius. <laughs> For people who don't know, you've been acting. I mean, you're 13, 14 years old, and you've been already acting since you were like six years old. That is true. What were the roles like leading up to, okay, this movie is my big moment, my breakout? Um, you know, I, it sounds, it sounds like a joke when I say it, that I peaked when I was 10, but in some ways I did because I had been traveling the world with the La Mama Experimental Theater right. Group, and it was the 70s, and it was a very early 70s. 72 was the first tour, and so, I, I mean, that I was on as a kid, and so I was seven, and my parents didn't go, and my first passport, I had no front teeth, and it was considered very cute, and I, it was, it's, it's, it's strange to grow up in the adult world when you're the kid in the room, because if you know too much, you're considered precocious, right? Yeah. But they expect you to know a lot in order to fulfill the task and be a team player and be responsible and don't screw up and make the plane and don't lose your per diem. Or, it was like joining the circus. It was like running away and, and touring the world with, with young people in the 70s. And it was a much more innocent time. So my dad and mom let me have that experience. I wouldn't have the courage as a parent to let my very young kid have that. I don't know. They, they were extraordinary people, honestly, to, to trust the universe as much as they did. It was a wonderful experience. Life by living, life by doing, life by traveling. Got to see so many different cultures. I was thinking about you because I have a 14-year-old daughter. After a little romance mm -hmm. becomes a hit, you're mm -hmm. 14, mm -hmm. you're on the cover of Time magazine. Mm -hmm. Laurence Olivier is saying you're the next Grace Kelly. What did all that feel like to a 14-year-old? Well, I remember approaching the newsstand. We had newsstands, kiosks in the street, and they used to have, there weren't so many magazines then. So one magazine, you'd have 10 of them at a, at a, at a row, you know. And I guess 1978, I mean, you'd have, I'm not gonna list the magazines, but Time Magazine always had the upper right-hand corner as if it were dog-eared, right, and right. you'd see a photograph of some world leader. And in my case, it was Henry Kissinger. And I thought, this is really bizarre. I'm, this is a very surreal experience. I'm clearly having an out-of-body experience, and this too shall pass. And I and I and I thought about birdcage liner, and I thought, <laughs> I thought, it's just paper. It's not going to. Don't allow this to m mean anything to me, because I knew it wasn't about merit. I could trace back how it was that I wound up on the cover of Time magazine, and. It wasn't because I had done anything. It was because I was an anomaly. And it was a curiosity to have people that young in the film industry as a new wave of culture and cinema. And I thought, oh, oh, interesting. But I knew that it wasn't going to be. I mean, we're still dining out on the story literally because Time Magazine usually is about a very meritorious person, sure. right? And I felt a little embarrassed honestly, because mm. I was playing handball over under the 59th Street Bridge thinking, I have no business being on the cover of Time Magazine. This is crazy. I'm sure my dad was thrilled, you know. That's my kid, you know. Of course. But I was sitting there going, please don't ask me to live up to that. But where did you get the wisdom to have that perspective at 14 years old? Because it seems... Growing up around adults, probably. Right, right. No, no filter from people around me. But uh, the tempered innocence. You lose innocence as, as you grow, and, and then you start to value your own innocence. And that was working with George Roy Hill. That's what he said about his movies. 
that they're always about innocence, that the, the loss of innocence of the main character. Mm. So he saw the theme in his own work. That's, that's really, that's cool when, you, when you're not, he didn't have to audition for his jobs. You could create your own job. It's different right, when, you're, right. when you're an actress, you sort of go, is this gonna be the one? Do I feel like I wanna do this? It's different than writing it and having a vision for the end product. I'm sort of a tapestry uh, thread, you know, and how they edit it and how they put the music and the credits and how they promote it. It's all out of my hands and I, and I like it that way because mm. if I were in control, then I'd have to take all the blame. You know, it's not worth the credit. It's too big a risk. <laughs> That's so interesting, right? It is interesting. Yeah. Because you could say, well, what's the next one? Right. Next. Right. It's okay. I'm, I mean, it feels like watching your career, even to now, you do have this perspective on what it means to be a movie star. I'm sure you don't like that term, or a celebrity, and that it doesn't really interest you that much. Well, and it does in terms of what people like Jane Fonda have done with it. Meaning, right. if you live a long time, right. you can add, you know, something to humanity in terms of what you've done with your fame. Right. That I think is. But valued. the things you went through as a child. Mm -hmm becoming a child star can ruin people, obviously. And then you're in Coppola movie, you like you're, they push you through and you, you have this incredible young career, but you survive it and then some, mm -hmm. and you're being nominated Isn't it for- it interesting that they use the word survive? Yeah, well, because there are some Because it is a don't. gauntlet of yeah. potential bad choices that you're not even supposed to be aware enough to make good or bad choices. It's all luck yeah. or, or some, person in the background who's a marionette and you're the puppet and, and there's strings being pulled that allow you to have good fortune compared to somebody else. One of the things my dad said to me um, as, as he knew he was dying, he said, you know, isn't it enough, Diane? Don't you think it's somebody else's turn? And he, because he's brutal. My dad was famously brutal, um, hence an acting teacher. Right. Cut you asunder, right, in a, in a way that nobody else can or you wouldn't allow anybody else to. And um, it was almost like saying, are you gonna keep going? I knew he was daring me to keep, to keep, to keep after it. He wanted me to have a, one of those lifer type careers. And you have, right? I <laughs> yeah, mean, look, here I, you are. Am I, I supposed mean, to go into yeah, 30 years? It's like, so what's the secret if somebody's watching right now to keep that ball in the air the way you have, to, to have had all these phases where you go- Being open to change. Really, yeah. I think so being open to change. I mean, the human body is very humbling. And if you're a woman, you certainly are aware of the way change is part of your fate, because there's only a window of time within which you can procreate. And that is such a blessing. And it is also a measure of worth that men don't experience. And it is also a tremendous gift because you, in some ways, get to be born fresh. I gotta watch my terms because my grandmother was a Pentecostal preacher. I don't wanna get into trouble. <laughs> but you can be born freshly in your own self-understanding by not internalizing any longer the male gaze. Unless you want to. Right. <laughs> unless, you're, unless it's fun for you now and you can right. do it your way on your terms. And so I'm watching women these days, and I'm very heartened by the diversity of representation that is accessible to young people today. But see, it takes strength. You have to be able to come up against all these things that want you to internalize them and make you an insecure person. So every little lesson that you get and being able to change and adapt and not let it define you is, is the goal for women, I think. Mm. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. Oh, boom. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. But when the school board presented its plan, it ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. The false narrative. Shame. This is Southlake. All episodes available now. 
Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. You've been consistent. Was it gratifying in that run, sort of perfect storm, unfaithful, under the Tuscan sun, to just have this... People knew you from a little romance, and they knew you I, along yeah. the way, and then here she is again, you know? John Cusack and I made a film together, and we sat in the trailer at one point, and he said something that I'm going to quote, and I, he's going to have to forgive me, because maybe he would disagree with himself at this point. And there were these books on the table, and he says, you know, I think we're the, we're the coffee table book actors. We, we make everybody feel super comfy, cozy. We've been there since they were 12. They are now whatever age they are, and we're, we're still here, and they know they're okay because we're still here. And I thought, I can work with that. I thought, I'm not ashamed of that at all. I, I, I bring it, because we want to see what else, what else, what else you got. And, um, and that's part of the reason I chose this, this show, is because it's so completely fresh and different for me as a show, even if I were just watching it. So to think of myself in it, get a little squirrely, but that's the fun of it. You're supposed to do the work that scares you. It's funny, when I interviewed him for this show a couple of months ago, he was saying sometimes he'll be watching TV and he'll come across a movie on cable, and he said, it's like looking at your old yearbook photos. You go, who is that guy? <laughs> what, is, <laughs> what is up with your hair? Who is that yeah, guy? Yeah, you yeah. know? Fun. Do you ever come across your old stuff when you're watching TV, or do you Well, or I you call it my young it? stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you right. It cuts both ways. <laughs> I mean, um, um, Sure, I do, and I and I and I, I always want to break the mold. I mean, when you're an actor, you want to be able to disappear into something as much as you're allowed, uh, or have the courage, or can pull off. I think it's an incredibly noble profession, and I did not used to think that. I used to really poo-poo my profession because I grew up in it. Yeah. You know, where, wherever you grow up, you have to leave. And this pandemic, actors got me through it. And of course the crew and everybody that makes actors shine. But they're the ones on camera. Everything that makes that moment possible, yes. But the actors get us through it. And the comfort, the, the comfort we have taken from watching the shows. But I, my hat's off to, to the profession because we're, we're able to increase our compassion and have diverse experiences vicariously and expand our imagination and our sense of what's possible for ourselves. We feel seen. Um, they're championing something that we wish we could champion, so we have champions now. Um, it's, it's an amazing craft. And I see why so many people want to, want to break in, and I'm, and I'm glad for my daughter because there's a lot, more <laughs> well, a lot more access. She's into it, right? She's into and it. And you've encouraged her? You know, I discouraged her. Oh, you did? I think most people in my profession discourage right. their offspring. Uh, because, <laughs> because you know too much. I know too much. And she has seen behind the curtain in Oz, as I call it. And, and after graduating Gallatin at NYU and after her journalist uh, education, this is the real storytelling in a way. In a, in a way. And, and I think I, I have the sense that she's going to morph into writing things. Mm. That's my... Every parent has a fantasy they project onto their kids, so forgive me, Eleanor. But um, I think she's got it in her to be sort of the... I always say you can replace an actor. They're, uh, they're the most replaceable thing in a way, but you can't replace the writing. That is, if it's not on the page, how do you expect that to get to the stage? Right. It's got to be in the writing. And I think she's incredibly gifted. And, of course, she can act. And she's beautiful. That's fine. But I, I still think that, oh, write something for actors to do forever, you know, then the, to me that's the highest, the highest height. Well, congratulations on the series. It's, it's outstanding you. and it's just fun to Thank walk you. through your career. It's Honor a pleasure. to speak with you today. Nice to see you. Good night. Nice to see you.
make some slices here. Good job. You okay? Welcome to Dylan Dishes Cooking with Cal. In this Today All Day series, I'm looking back at some of my favorite Cooking with Cal recipes and sharing my top kitchen tips. Today's episode is one that we're calling Grandma's Greatest because it features recipes from two amazing grandmas. First up, you'll see me and Calvin whipping up my mom's pasta salad, and then we tackle my grandmother's short ribs. You know, one of the biggest obstacles timid cooks face in the kitchen is just not knowing where to start or what to make. Well, here's a good rule of thumb. Always cook what you know and what you loved growing up. Just think back to what your parents and grandparents always served. I've also found that family recipes are often the simplest, which is probably why our parents made them so often. This first recipe is proof of that. You only need five ingredients, pasta, canned tomatoes, black olives, parsley, and olive oil. Take a look. Okay. All right, so let's get the ingredients ready. Okay. How this thing works, we're gonna use a can of tomatoes. But these are cooked tomatoes, they're not raw tomatoes. So you'll like these, because they're cooked tomatoes, okay? Now turn that as hard as you can. <clears throat> use those muscles. <clears throat> Do you want some help? Do you know what these are? What? Olives. Black olives. Black on taste one, you haven't tried one in a long time. Ollie loves them. Ollie loves olives. A little bit. I love them. I could eat them like this. So we got our tomatoes, our olives. Do you know what this is? What? Got some parsley. All right, you want to chop this for me? Why don't you put your hand like that? There we go. Good job. Now I'm just gonna make these all a little smaller, okay? This adds a nice pop of green and a nice freshness to the whole dish. So a lot of times my mom would use elbow noodles, the ones that look like C's or U's as you call them. I felt like using tricolor pasta. You know why they call it tricolor pasta? Why? Because there's three colors. So this one is just made with wheat. This one has tomato in it. And what do you think's in this one if it's green? Broccoli. Close. What else is green? What's green and leafy? Celery. Well, celery has some leaves. What looks like lettuce? Spinach. Yay! Cool. I'm gonna dump this in, okay? Oh, well, that's boiling. Can you dump the can of tomatoes in here? Now all of the olives. The parsley. Ah, good call, buddy. Good idea. Now we wait. Can you taste that? Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right, draining the noodle. All right, I want to pour these into this bowl. Dump a whole bunch of olive oil in here. All of it? Not all of it, I'll tell you when. All around, swirl it all around. A little salt. This will come out fast, so let's not. Let's give it a big stir. Before we put this in the fridge to let it cool down, let's taste it, okay? Mm -hmm. You like it? it? Tastes even better when it's cold. So I thought this was such an easy recipe, but you guys had a lot of questions about it, so let's get to them. First, what's the last seasoning you put on this salad? Just salt and pepper. I think there's not a lot of seasoning or anything that goes into this salad, so if I sprinkle anything on it, it's, it's really just salt and pepper. I'm a big fan of salt and pepper. Next question, did you drain the tomatoes? Uh, no, I put the whole can with the diced tomatoes and the liquid because some of the pasta absorbs some of that liquid, so um, it, it helps to add some moisture to the dish. Another viewer asked, do you think it would still be tasty without the olives? Yes, the thing that's the best part about this recipe is this is just a base. If you don't like olives, if you don't like parsley, leave them out. If you wanna put some cube cheese in there or some pepperoni, throw that in. Uh, really, it's just about a base. And if you like it a little tangier, you could probably throw in some Italian dressing. It's, it's just a basic, basic pasta salad. This is the way we always made it, but feel free to change it up however you want. 
Another question about olives, are they sliced black olives? Yes, I kept this recipe even simpler by buying the actual pre-sliced black olives, um, but you can buy regular olives and slice them up. I bet if you like it tangy, it would even taste good with green olives too. And another question about the tomatoes. What brand of tomatoes do you use? I'm not uh, that loyal to a particular brand, uh, but I do love San Marzano tomatoes whenever you can find them, whether you're using diced tomatoes or you're using you know, crushed tomatoes to make a sauce. San Marzano tomatoes are just a little bit sweeter, so you don't have to add the sugar to them, and they just, they're, they're straight from Italy, and they're just absolutely delicious. Slightly more expensive, but totally worth it, I promise. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Hey everybody, it's Hoda Kotb from the Today Show. I am so, so excited to tell you about my new podcast, Making Space with Hoda Kotb. I sit down with some incredible people and we'll hear some uplifting stories. Listen to Making Space now on Apple Podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Controversy in South Lake tonight after teens posted a racist video. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. My children were told Rosa Parks is dead. You all have to sit in the back of the bus. But when the school board presented its plan, this small town fight ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. The false narrative of rampant racism. Shame. This is South Lake, an NBC News podcast. All episodes available now. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back to Dylan Dishes, Cooking with Cal. This episode is all about celebrating family recipes passed down from generation to generation. And Kelvin absolutely loves his grandma's recipe for pasta salad, and I absolutely love my grandma's recipe for short ribs. So my grandmother lived in an apartment that my dad built above our garage in our house. So it was always special when we kind of walked up the stairs to my grandmother's apartment for dinner. Her home was always warm, and cozy and it always just smelled so good whether it was you know beef and barley soup or these short ribs i just remember it was always like a meat and potatoes or a hearty dish and we'd all just sit around at her brown dining room table and it just it was just special we were still home but we were over graham's house eating one of her recipes and they were always so delicious for this recipe you'll need short ribs paprika chili powder poultry seasoning onion, tomato paste, egg noodles, peas, and salt and pepper. Say hi, Mammy. Hi, Mammy. Hi, Cal. Hi, how, how are you today? today? I asked you for the recipe, and you said, you know, you just throw the meat in a dish, you throw this together, you put it on top, you, you cover it for a little, you cook it for a little. There was no written instructions with the recipe, so a lot depended on looking at it, seeing what it's doing, throw it in the oven a little bit longer. That kind of thing. Well, I wish you could be here with me to help make this and, and especially eat it with us. It'll be a tight squeeze, but we'll see if we can get them all here. Okay. There we go. They're all squeezed in there, right? Yeah. Four, okay. Salt, pepper. Now we have to slice up an onion. Oh, what if it hurts my eye? 
I know. Can I close my eye? Well, then it's hard to cut and close your eyes at the same time. Okay. I'm gonna make some slices here. Good job. You okay? We've got all kinds of spices here, okay? Are we gonna mix them up? Yeah, but first, I want you to scoop all of this tomato paste into here as well, okay? okay. You pour this water in there. I cannot do it. Cause you're here to help me. Okay, so now we're gonna pour all of this, all over our short ribs. Now we're gonna bake them. And then we're gonna bake them, you're right. So all we have to do, we're gonna cover this with foil. We're gonna bake it for like 45 minutes. 45 minutes, I have to, right? <laughs> That's right. Put it back in the oven without the foil so it finishes cooking. Where's the noodle? This tastes exactly like my grandma's. Is hers yummy? Hers is so yummy. One of the questions I get asked all the time is what are the tools you use with Calvin in the kitchen? And knives are the big question because I'm cooking with a kid and here he is chopping some vegetables. So when I first started cooking with Calvin, I did all the chopping. I didn't want him anywhere near a knife. He did the stirring, he did the breaking of the eggs, he did all that. Then once he wanted to participate more, I found these knives. Um, they're plastic knives, you can find them anywhere online. So they're, they're sharp enough to cut, but they're not really sharp enough that Calvin would cut his finger. <laughs> so the best vegetables this works for are something like zucchini, something like cooked potatoes. Uh, hard boiled egg would be good, soft fruits like berries or pears, and you know, it takes, takes a little little bit of strength, but at least it, you know, is not gonna hurt them. And it kind of just gets them used to, you know, some knife skills. I would also, you know, kind of do this for Calvin. I'd chop this up with my knife and then just give him a little bit to just sort of learn how to rock the knife, learn how to keep his hands out of the way, and just really basic knife skills with, with soft fruits and vegetables. That's what these knives are good for. Eventually, it became a thing though where you know, you're making soup and you're chopping some harder stuff like carrots and onions. So I needed to upgrade a little bit and I found these great knives. This is an actual knife. I mean, it's, it's sharp and it will cut through your hard vegetables. But the thing I love about it is it also comes with this shield. So it teaches you the proper way to cut. So Calvin can put his hand here and he learns, you know, you stick your finger through this hole so he learns you know not to put his finger under here so his hand placement is good on the knife and then he learns to kind of rock but look at how this is like a real sharp knife for a kid but it's all safe the hand that's holding the knife knows how to hold it properly the hand that's holding the food knows how to hold it properly so that your fingers are kept out of the way the thing i love about this brand is that it also comes with a peeler Calvin loves apples and pears. Obviously he loves carrots, but he does not like the skin on anything. He'd peel a blueberry if he could. So the same kind of thing. You stick your finger in the hole and then it teaches you to just have your fingers out of the way. So my job is to make sure he holds, you know, the right end and isn't like, you know, doing it the wrong way. And this thing's role is to make sure Calvin holds this the right way. So you can see how sharp they are, they work. So once your kid masters the plastic knife, I think it's good to upgrade to the real deal. The next time you go to your parents' or your grandparents' house, look through their recipe boxes. You may just find some delicious gems that you totally forgot about. But until then, I hope you'll try my family recipes 
and let me know what you think. For all these recipes, go to today.com slash Dylan Dishes. So first, what you're going to need is breadcrumbs, Italian seasoning, olive oil, and serrated <laughs> mozzarella cheese. <laughs> My name is Peyton Janicki, and this is Kids in the Kitchen. I'm Peyton Janicki, I'm eight years old, and I'm in third grade. My earliest memory of cooking is when I was younger, I used to help my grandma make apple and pumpkin pies for Thanksgiving. I love cooking with my grandma because she's very nice and she's also a really good cook and at the end I get to eat it. <laughs> you need to add some chicken broth um, with a pot of oil in it um, and you need to let that sit before we add the couscous. My favorite thing about having my YouTube channel, Practically Peyton, it's basically just cooking and just like, it's not even, it's not even hard for me. It's, it's really fun. I love to cook for my mom, my dad, and my little brother, Michael. I also bake for my dog sometimes. For his first birthday, I helped bake him a cake. And it was basically just dog food, but shaped into like a bone shape. And it also came with some icing for dogs. He loved it so much. Some of my favorite hobbies are softball, swimming, dance, basketball, singing, and piano. When I grow up, there's three things that I might want to be. I want to be a teacher, a chef, and an art teacher because I love to do art. I think that cooking is basically kind of like art. I might put in the wrong ingredient and I still want to see how it turns out. It's basically like mixing paint colors. Today I'm so excited because I get to show you how to make Nanny's stuffed chicken breast and roasted broccoli. A couple of years ago, my nanny created this recipe because she was really good at making chicken cutlets and she knew one of my favorite foods was pepperoni. So she magically put the pepperoni in the chicken cutlets and it was amazing. Okay guys, let's get started. I'm so excited. Make sure you preheat the oven to 425 degrees. First thing is we are going to line this cookie sheet with foil and then we're going to spray it with some non-stick baking spray. I love using foil because it makes cleanup super easy. The first ingredients that you're going to need is breadcrumbs, Italian seasoning, olive oil, and shredded mozzarella cheese. I like using shredded mozzarella cheese because you don't have to shred it and it's just like so hard shredding it and you can get hurt shredding it. In a small bowl, I'm going to add breadcrumbs, Italian seasoning, olive oil, and mozzarella cheese. This is my topping. The cheese and the olive oil are going to make the chicken brown, crispy, and delicious. So now you're gonna grab your thin chicken breast, salt, pepper, mozzarella cheese, pepperoni, and sour cream. The thinner the chicken breast, the better, because we're kind of making a pepperoni sandwich. And the bun is the chicken. Place half of the chicken breast on the prepared foil. Now we're gonna season it with salt and pepper. This is like sprinkling fairy dust. 
Now we're going to sprinkle it with a half a cup of shredded mozzarella cheese. You want to make sure you spread it evenly throughout the four chicken breasts. You don't want to skip out on the cheese. My brother loves cheese, so I think I'm going to give him a little bit extra. He'll thank me later. My favorite step of this whole thing, adding the pepperoni. So you want to add three pieces of pepperoni on each slice, each piece of chicken. What I love most about pepperoni is probably like it has like a little spice to it. It has like a little hotness. I love pepperoni so much. I even eat it for breakfast sometimes. And secretly I try to sneak it into all of my recipes. Now we're gonna place the other half of the chicken on top of all of these pieces of chicken. Now you're going to put a thin layer of sour cream onto the chicken. This has a really good flavor, it, and it also helps make the breadcrumbs stick to the chicken. It's kind of like frosting in a cake. Now we are going to put the breadcrumb mixture on top of the chicken. I like this breadcrumb mixture because it makes the chicken like nice and crispy, and it gives a different but good flavor. See, this is the magic of the sour cream because it's sticking perfectly. This is looking so good, I can't wait to eat it. Now it's time to put this in the oven. It looks great, but I can't do it since I'm a kid, so I need help from my dad. Dad! Now we're gonna bake that for 20 minutes, and in the meantime, I'm going to bake one of my most favorite side dishes, roasted broccoli. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Controversy in South Lake tonight after teens posted a racist video. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. My children were told Rosa Parks is dead. You all have to sit in the back of the bus. But when the school board presented its plan, this small town fight ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. The false narrative of rampant racism. Shame. This is South Lake, an NBC News podcast. All episodes available now. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life in prime time and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism, but when the school board presented its plan, it ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative. This is South Lake. All episodes available now. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. In a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. Boom. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. 
the latest styles and biggest names. Today Food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Fun fact, it is actually like when you get any vegetable and put salt, pepper, olive oil and garlic powder like on top of it and bake it it'll taste amazing i actually won't eat broccoli any other way i always bake it this way and i love it now the first thing we're gonna do is cut the broccoli into florets but you can also just pull them apart and then you can have a parent cut it a little bit more after Now that we're getting to the middle, I'm just going to leave this for Mom. Mom, can you come help me? Let's cut with the broccoli. Make sure they're at a similar size so they roast evenly. Well, you're a fast cutter. Now, you're going to add olive oil. Salt. pepper, and garlic powder. Now you want to mix this really well. And cooking can get messy, so do it with your hands. It feels like, I don't know, like, have you ever like felt foam beads for like slime? It feels like that, but like wet and a little bit like more like crunchy. You want to make sure they're in one row or layer because if it's not, it'll just steam instead of getting all like crispy and delicious. It's time to put this baby in the oven, but I need help. Dad. Now we have to wait 10 minutes. It's starting to smell so good, so that's a good sign. I'm getting super hungry too. Look at how amazing this looks. It looks so delicious. The chicken, it looks so crispy and good, and the broccoli, it lo the same. It, it looks very crispy and good, it just, I imagine it in my mouth, tasting so good. All right, let's plate it. I'm gonna plate another one because I have a special guest. I can't wait until she arrives. She's gonna love this meal. Oh my gosh, perfect timing, she's here. <gasps> oh my goodness, this is the chicken dish I told you how to make. Mm -hmm. Peyton, it's beautiful, it smells delicious. That's what you were sniffing when you just came in. Oh, I can't wait to eat it, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You did a great job. Mm. You make this exactly like I did. Okay, let's Actually, see how it tastes. Yours, I think, tastes even better. <laughs> it's so delicious. I love sharing meals with you. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> even if it's not this dish. <laughs> I love you so much. I love you too. I loved having you guys in the kitchen today. 
I hope you'll keep this recipe in mind and share it with someone special too. Bye! Look, here's here's my favorite thing right now. I feel like there's like a lot of friendship in this room. And I'm looking at Maria, I'm looking at Oprah, and I'm just thinking about like how would you Maria, how would you describe your friendship with Oprah? Oh my God. Uh long. Yeah. <laughs> long. <laughs> long. Yeah, long. Yeah, deep. This actually. What? Which one is of the longest. Yeah. One of the longest. Long. The longest. Forty over forty years. Wow. Um, I would describe it as deep, uh, simple, mm -hmm. low maintenance, trustful, mm. loyal, constant, consistent, honest, um, tried and true. Wow. Um, can we keep going? I love that. <laughs> Oprah, how about you? How do you describe your, your uh, friendship? I'd say that there is a spiritual connection Mm. I say the reason I, I first met her in the bathroom um, at WJZ TV yeah. early in the morning, I was coming in to do the morning cut ins and she was uh, doing evening magazine and had been up all night, was in the bathroom, literally <laughs> splashing water on her face. And we started a conversation. And I, I forever think that that was like a divine moment that happened because she was one of my true grounded friendships that carried me through my entire career. So I don't have a lot of friends. Uh, everybody knows Gail, there's Gail, there's Maria, there's Bob. Mm. And that's, that's about it, you know? And Gail and Maria, I met around the same time, Gail and I 42 years, Maria and I 42 two years. And I never really expanded that circle until recently. I, you know, I've become friends with a couple of people in my later adult life in the past five years. But the thing that got me through all of those years, I would say grounded and the truth. Oh my God, Maria's gonna tell you the truth. That's no matter damn well. How, well, how, do, how do you receive it? When Maria tells you, because Maria actually, Oprah, had a real truth telling with me recently and it leveled me but it was exactly what I needed to hear. But sometimes it's hard to receive it. When she gives you one of those hard truth bombs, Woo! how do you, how do you receive face? it? Yes, no, one of the big no, ones. No. And, and Maria will give it to you in your face and then say, and you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. You already know what I'm saying is true. Oh, what I'm saying is true. Yes. She does you know, it, she does it, it really, right back she does by that. She does it right back. How, so how like there's no, uh, yeah. Well, it depends who's giving it to me. Yeah. When she gives it to me, um, I I take it from somebody who has known me, knows me, and wants the best for me. Mm -hmm. So I don't. I receive it without agenda, mm -hmm. and I receive it yeah. because she's telling me out of love. But she wants me to, you know, she, she has had to hit me over the head mm -hmm. a few times yeah. over the years, mm. and. Um, and sometimes that truth has leveled me. Mm. But in my darkest moment, uh, moments, she was right there, sitting right next to me, mm. holding space. This is called holding yeah. space, right? Yeah. This whole podcast. Right. Making space. Right? Making space. Um, and I think, you know, very few people can hold space uh -huh. for you. And she held space for me before I even knew the expression. Mm to hold space, <laughs> you know, I didn't even know what that was going on, what she was doing, but I understood it to hold space for me to uh, understand what was going on at a certain point in my life and waited for me to get to the other side. To get to the, I, mm -hmm. I, you know, it's so strange, um, Oprah, if you, just about an hour or so ago, I was just looking around online and I, for some reason I came upon your mom's funeral Mm. And mm -hmm. I watched your eulogy, mm -hmm. and it moved me to my core, especially when you said at 52 years old, you did something you didn't think you could do. You crawled in bed with your mother and said, like, you said, I yeah. love you. Mm -hmm. And then I looked into the, um, into the congregation, and there was Oprah. And I thought, yeah. 
right there, right next to her. Um, how did mm -hmm. you support Maria during that time? Well, you do what all friends do. You, you, you just hold the space because you don't know the words. You don't know um, what is going to be the comfort. So you just try with your own presence, be the comfort, and you try to meet the person exactly where they are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Maria, uh, uh, both Maria and Gail mm -hmm. had these intense relationships with their mothers. <laughs> and... You know, Gail would call her mother so many times during the day, I'd say, what could you possibly talk about? <laughs> and Marie, Maria was, Maria and her mother were always, you know, like talking all the time. So I had the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. And I used to envy it, like, mm -hmm. wow, I wonder what that would be like. So to be able to stand there in the moment, you know, I could feel many times during, uh, the transition mm -hmm. of Eunice Kennedy Shriver, whom <laughs> I always said, if she had run for president, I would have stopped anything I was doing and <laughs> went and worked for her because I believed if she decided she wanted it, she would get it. Mm -hmm. And, um, but there were moments even before her passing, like Maria, what I remember the most, I was just telling somebody the other day, this experience that Maria had with her mother in the hospital changed me forever about having an advocate. I don't care who you are, you, you should never, ever go to the hospital, spend one hour in the hospital without somebody there to advocate for you. Because remember when your mother was yeah. sick and she'd gone home and had that infection, okay. and then you all came back to the hospital and you couldn't get anybody to respond because it was mm -hmm. the weekend and the doctor was golfing and the da 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 was <laughs> happening. Yeah. And all of that was going on. That's when your mother, you know, for, you know, I, I, as I recall, we thought that that was going to be it. They right. came in and mm -hmm. the priest was there and we thought that was it. And then that Eunice came right out of it <laughs> after. <laughs> she did. That was she an said, incredible. I ain't going yet. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was it's an incredible, incredible uh, moment that she, but I can also say that, um, when my mother died, which is something that I had like worried about really my whole life. Mm -hmm. My mother was sick when I was little. And so kind of her impending passing was always very much in my life. You know, it was like, <clears throat> was this gonna happen? So I always thought I'll never be able to survive that. And after um, my mother passed away, um, two weeks later, my uncle passed away. Mm -hmm. And um, Oprah had been at my wedding. She was at my mother's funeral. Mm -hmm. And then she called me right after my mother died and said, I'm going to have a gathering hmm. for you. We're going to be, call it Team Maria, and we're going to, I'm going to have all the people who love you, they're all going to come to my house, and we're just going to have this girls weekend. And I was kind of like, what, what, you know, like, I was like, what is she talking about? And I was like, okay, that sounds like nice. This was like three, she goes, it'll cheer you up, it'll be good. And then my uncle died. Hmm. And then she's like, I think we should still go ahead with the team. I was like, wait, what? I'm like, and it was like literally a month was something like that, a month or mm -hmm. two months after both of those things. She invited like 20 girls uh, to her house, mm -hmm. and we just Who had. All knew you. What? what all you? of them knew you. Well, yeah. You remember? <laughs> that's when we all chose the word. Yes, we that's right. What, what was the word? Yeah, and I have that. She, she, we, she had this. She had everybody choose a word about me, and she engraved them on rocks, or oh. they were colored rock, not rocks, but kind of crystal colored stones. Stones. Yes, yeah, stones. Excuse me. And then she put them in this beautiful box that looks kind of like those box, mm -hmm. those uh, mm -hmm. books behind her, and presented it to me. And everybody wore the same clothes, oh. and we had lunch, and it was just this really sweet, loving, like moment of like, you've got mm -hmm. a posse, mm -hmm. you've got a group, mm -hmm. we're here, mm -hmm. we love you, mm -hmm. you're gonna make it through. What was the word, Oprah, what was your word? Do you remember? I'm so glad, I was just getting ready to tell you that, oh. Hoda, you are the interviewer. <laughs> uh, Is her picture? I was just gonna say, and you know what my word was? My word for Maria was cherish, oh. because oh. I cherish everything about her. I cherish her frankness. I cherish her directness. I cherish her honesty. I cherish her truth. I cherish her sense of searching for the truth. Mm. I cherish her courage. I mean, 
for me, the word was cherish. Mm. I love I that. Oh I love God. that because I didn't feel, I don't feel like in my life I was cherished mm. and uh, pushed, motivated, uh, you know, um, all of these kind of really strong words, but uh, not cherished. And I think that mm. our relationship, you know, what started, as she said, in Baltimore, we're both living in the same um what do you call that? Like not apartment. condos, but it was just like apartments. They were like, and she was on the, she was the upstairs and I was in the downstairs <laughs> and she had clothes and furniture. They were called luxury garden <laughs> apartments. Maria. Okay, luxury, luxury garden, garden apartments. apartments. We were like, and we had a supermarket <laughs> and we were like it, both working at this thing and we would eat in the supermarket because they had these big <laughs> French fry kind of potato things and we had like no social life at all, although she was on TV. Because all we did was work. Yeah, we That's just we worked work at eight. <laughs> and she had, but she had, you know, kind of furniture and she had clothes and she was like, <laughs> it, you know, and she would go to church and speak. Wow. And in Baltimore, and I was like, oh my God, look at you. You're like speaking in a church and like, <laughs> this is so huge. You're going to like do something really big. And yeah. I see you in a church. Or I see you speaking. Yeah. And, and, but she, you know, it was a, it kind of in a funny way, a beautiful time yeah. because it was quiet and it was intimate mm -hmm. and it was, um, kind of real and those are the moments I think that like when I'm just sitting alone with you and I just come and hang with you yeah. or like that's what I cherish in my friendship when we just sit there and like can you believe you know can you can you believe that or remember <laughs> this or can did you you know that kind of stuff which is just because so few people you can really talk to yeah honestly honestly and that you feel safe and you know that like when i walk out the door i know nothing's going anywhere Nothing. yeah good morning everybody welcome to today let's go is the delta variant more dangerous to kids or is it simply more transmissible Maryland's principal of the year. I serve an amazing group of staff and students. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at seven on NBC News Now. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, that's good. Shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Does the White House think they have an Afghanistan problem or a COVID problem? Do you believe the abortion issue should reflect the will of the people or the will of the elected officials? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. When you guys were young, yeah. hanging out together, we're still um, young, and you were, of course, you are. <laughs> but how did 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 people ask you guys out on dates? Were you dating? How how was that seen during that time in your life? I was already going out with Arnold, oh, so okay. I was twenty two, oh, and um, so and you had not no you had not met Stedman at yeah. that point. Yeah, you were going out. You can take it from here. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't meet Stedman until maybe. Listen, I was in bad relationships all the time, but Maria is correct. I mean, both of our lives were consumed by working. That was yeah. when I remember Maria once putting, remember that boss that I had, that little short guy that was so annoying. Anyway, I remember putting in my, my time sheet one week and it was 102 weeks, I, 102 hours I'd worked. 
in a week. And he came up to me and said, well, I can see you're not a team player. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, you live close to the station because Marie and I live within like yeah. a mile of the television station. Yeah. And so when you lived that close to the television station, they expected to be able to call on you if mm -hmm. there was, you know, mm -hmm. a four alarm fire or if there was an accident or whatever. You just get out of bed because you're the closest reporter. And so the bottom line is we worked all the time. We took a lot of abuse that we wouldn't take today. Mm -hmm. yeah. We did a lot <laughs> of things. That, that's true. Uh, and that's the truth. Yeah. Uh, and um, I didn't have a whole lot of time for dating because it, my life was just really yeah. consumed by literally you just go to work and then you get up the next day and start the thing, same whole thing all over again. And, and I, I went to church. I was very, very, very because when I left home, when I left um, Nashville mm -hmm. in 1976 and came to Baltimore, the first thing, the last thing my father said and the most uh imminent thing for him was find a church home hmm. you must find a church home mm -hmm. which is what happens in the african-american community if you're raised in a church culture where well, mm -hmm. you're going to now leave that city you need to find whatever mm -hmm. is going to be your church base home. which means um basically that you're connecting to a kind of community that you've been familiar with that's going to help support mm -hmm. you you know, in, 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 if things don't go well or if things mm -hmm. do go well. So I found my church home and had my one friend, Maria, who lived in the same apartment <laughs> complex. Yeah. My one friend, Gail, who lived in Chevy Chase. Mm -hmm. So um, and that, that was my life. That was our life. And it kind of to, I would say to Oprah's unbelievable yeah, credit or, you know, that her life, you know, went from there, obviously, mm -hmm. to Chicago mm -hmm. and then all went through all of these kind of changes and mm -hmm. everything. It's still a very core little group. Hmm. Isn't that funny? And yeah. which I think is so kind of awesome. And like when I've had a little, you know, if I've had a dinner for Oprah's birthday, it's like the same, like she has core. a core thing yep. there. And, um, and you feel safe in that core friendship. And it's just when you've like, you know, had somebody who's gone through the birth of all your children with you, yeah. right? Your marriage, your divorce, the death of your parents, uh, hmm. the death of yourself, the rebirth hmm. of yourself, hmm. the, the evolution of herself, mm -hmm. the change of herself. And um, it's kind of like if you, you don't think that off, you just step back and you're like, damn. Like, how blessed am I to have that for that length of time, the duration of that time, and um, all the laughs and tears and joys and, uh, and not have lost our way. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Controversy in South Lake tonight after teens posted a racist video. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. My children were told Rosa Parks is dead. You all have to sit in the back of the bus. But when the school board presented its plan, this small town fight ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative of rampant racism. Shame. This is South Lake, an NBC News podcast. All episodes available now. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. Is the Delta variant more dangerous to kids, or is it simply more transmissible? Maryland's principal of the year. I served an amazing group of staff and students. The 
The Meet the Press Chuck Todd Cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd Cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Wow. And there were there was a moment you told me, Maria, about you and Oprah that still to this day touches me. And we were in the makeup room, Oprah, Maria and I, and she she said there's a there's one single song that she said soothed her. So, oh, this is the best story on the, earth. So on you, earth. Wait, on I, earth. I am so excited because just just so you know, she played that song for me. We had an eye lock, Maria and I. I was crying, like I felt it, and I got chills all over my body. And she said, "I'm going to tell you a story about this song." Will you? Yeah. Will you no, you, you let oh, her. You, you, tell, you it? tell it, and then I'll interrupt you. No, and Joy. Maria, you tell it. I'll. T- will you tell your version? Yeah, you tell your version. Okay, my okay. version is. Um, so she was having a birthday. Yep. And she had a very small group of uh, girlfriends uh, in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. She just kind of built her place in Hawaii. And um, she was having, uh, it was mm-hmm. at the beginning of OWN, which mm-hmm. was a rough period. Yes. Mm-hmm. Needless, uh, rough. Yeah. And, um, and so we're sitting. Not just in- rough. Every newspaper, everybody yeah. was saying, you should have kept your day job, the struggling mm-hmm. OWN. What did you, what'd you leave the Oprah show for? It's. It's a disaster. It's about it just one story after another story after another story. And new people would sit up and, you know, joke about it. It was shortened Freud at its greatest. Mm. You know, it mm-hmm. was really a bad time for me. So, yeah. Go ahead. Really a bad time. And I'll she was, uh, it was, yeah, she was kind of being raked over the coals publicly and everything. And she was really hurting. So we went to Hawaii and we were sitting in the dining room. And the Sonatum Corum came on the the um, mm-hmm. music thing, mm-hmm. and she and I both started like singing to the song. And I was like, "How do you know that song?" And she's like, "How do you know that song?" And I was like, "Oh my God, that song has helped me through." And this was after I had just gotten separated, and she's like, "Oh, that song is helping me." And so we started then talking about this song and the singer, and she was like, you know, and Oprah's the kind of person that if she's throwing something for you, she will go, she'll find out your favorite musician, yeah. she'll find out your favorite cake, yeah. your favorite people, your fa- and do all this sort of stuff. Yeah. And it doesn't often come back that mm-hmm. way, right? Because she's not organizing her own birthday, right? Yeah. So I got up from the table and I was like, can you imagine, like if she, if this had been my thing, she would have gotten that woman <laughs> to come and sing for me. Yeah. No, so, no, no, can I interrupt? Okay. Can I interrupt? Uh-huh. Yeah. Can I interrupt? Yeah. I actually said, I actually said to you, yes. oh my God, I thought to have her here. And then I thought, nah, it's just my birthday. <laughs> yeah. That's but if right. I were doing this for you, yeah. if mm-hmm. I'd have known you really liked her, I would have I would have done it for you. Yes. But I I, I didn't I didn't think I could do it for myself. Okay. Exactly. I I okay. Myself. So I said, Oh my god, I love her so much. Yeah. I thought to do it for myself and then I thought, no. Nah. Yeah. Yeah, so that tells you that done. tells you tells something you about her. It does right anyway, there. Anyway, so yeah. I got up from the thing yeah, and we started does. making calls. I started going to try to find her. Yeah. Right. I thought to myself, she's in California. I know right. she lives in California somewhere, but I didn't know her. Yeah. I don't know anything about. So I called the guy that who had introduced the yeah. music to me. Do you know her? Do you? anyway? Long story short, by the next morning, this other woman who was at the party, we find this singer. Turns out she's a mile down the road. Oh my God. So we call her. <laughs> so we call her uh-huh. and she's doing some concert or something. Right. So we said, look it, you have to come over. In Paia, yeah. she's doing yeah. a concert in Paia. Yeah. Okay, in Paia, well, how, which is 30 yeah. minutes from okay. her house. Okay, what are the <clears throat> chances the of that? The odds. What are the chances? Yeah. None, zero. <laughs> so we get her, we convince her to come over because mm-hmm. every evening, like right before dinner, we sit on the porch uh-huh. and we look for what Oprah calls his God moments, right? Mm-hmm. There you call it the God moments where we look out at the, the yes. ocean mm-hmm. and everything. We have a little okay. cocktail mm-hmm. and there we're on the porch. And so we had worked it out that we would be sitting there and then we'd have a little toast and you would hear, there were producers, like I was originally a Did producer. Did Oprah know about anything? No, she didn't know anything. You had no idea this was happening. No. Nothing, okay, this is nothing, good. right? Yes. So we're like, I'm like, okay, well, we'll start with this yeah. toast yeah. and then the music will yeah. start and she'll think the music is on the you know house radio right. and then you dressed in your white thing, you'll come down the steps oh. and it'll be just this moment. I have goosebumps. <laughs> 
And so we go out onto the porch. We have our cocktails. I'm sitting in the rocking chair next to her. We're looking. I'm like, wow, look at this like ocean. It's beautiful. beautiful. And she's still kind of like, hmm, you know, like not in a great mood or whatever. <laughs> and then we're like, look, look at the sunset. All of a sudden, you hear this music. Oh gosh, start to come on. And she's like, it's an mm-hmm. autumn court. Yeah. yeah. And so she starts to hear the music, and I'm holding her hand. We're like looking at the thing, mm. and all of a sudden, <laughs> right? You take it from here. No. So I'm no. thinking it's the speaker. <laughs> Somebody's playing the music yeah. from yeah. the speaker yeah. because we play Sonatum Core, and then the song, and then I turn, and Sonatum Core <laughs> is walking down the stairs of the porch because she was on the upstairs balcony. Yeah. She is walking down the stairs of the porch and it was the most out of body, surreal. I think tears literally shot out of my eyes because I couldn't I couldn't connect that there she yesterday was. I at the, like it was midnight we were at the table. Yeah. Midnight we were at the table with me saying, you know, if I'd have known you really liked her, I would have made sure that she was here, but I didn't think I, you know, I'd do it for my own birthday. And she's now on wow. my front porch <laughs> for sunset cocktail. I mean, wow. Singing, if by thy grace I sing your holy name. By yeah. the way. And Why, by is the that way, a moment or what? That's a moment. It's that's a the moment. best moment. It was really one of those kind of, for me, once in a lifetime moments. It also was like, you know, that she wouldn't do something for herself that she would do yeah. for other people. Yeah. And it was really a God moment. And as God is my judge, stuff started to turn around after that. Is that right, Oprah? Yeah, 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 I would say. Yeah. That, is the, that was the moment for me because if something that miraculous can happen, if something that close to being, that was pure alignment. The mm. fact that the music comes on when yeah. it comes on, we're sitting at the table, I'm humming it and Maria goes, how do you know that song? I go, how mm-hmm. do you know that song? Yeah. Because, Sonata Makur is not something most people are. Yeah, at. yeah. And so, uh, and, and, and in less than 24 hours, that person is on your front porch. Is I, I just thought, okay, God is with me. Mm, yeah. Uh, it's still possible to be aligned. It's still possible. And so I started to shift the idea of this struggling network to what an awesome thing to be able to have a network in your name, mm-hmm, yeah. and what a great opportunity to be able to say something, whatever that th- that is you wanna share with the public in a way that you know represents you and stop looking at it as this God awful, oh, mm-hmm. I made a mistake and being defined by other people's idea right. of, of, of it. So, and that moment, by thy grace, I sing your holy name, oh. Whew, that yeah. was it. It was so but- beautiful. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Boom. Boom. Yes, yes, yes. Shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. Is the Delta variant more dangerous to kids, or is it simply more transmissible? Maryland's principal of the year. I serve an amazing group of staff and students. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. (laughs) Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews, 
Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. By the way, I have since fallen in love with that song deeply, and it is also the song that goes off at 3.15 in the morning. Oh. That's my wake up. Oh, By thy grace, way. yeah, it's the best wake up because you gently, yeah. Yeah. gently wake up. Um, how do you, when when you have an on your knees moment, which sounds like the own, that, that beginning part was, was that the lowest that you'd seen Oprah, Maria? Well, I saw that that was, you know, by that time, Oprah, you know, was a big public figure. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this was a big, you know, public, mm -hmm. um, you know. Uh, a humiliation for me. Yeah, yeah, it was a humiliation for mm -hmm. her. And I knew yeah. she was taking it itself. She had just come off of the mm -hmm. show. That had been a really big moment, mm -hmm. right? And she was just getting, you know, knocked around. And it people don't remember like how, who starts a network no, you know yeah. how it, people don't give you any grace space they don't mm -hmm. hold space for you mm -hmm. to get it right right mm -hmm. they didn't give mm -hmm. her any space uh they just expected her to go from the oprah winfrey show into you know a network that was all humming and doing mm -hmm. and you know that was from nothing but would be there 24 hours with perfect programming they didn't give her any time, time. yeah and um, so I think that it was, you know, a moment where she had to, you know, in a way go back to her grit yeah. that built, you know, her career. And mm -hmm. people forget that. They just saw her as Oprah Winfrey. Right. And um, but. But, you know, the other thing, uh, Hoda and Maria, the other thing was it was a big learning lesson for me. And by thy grace and the fact it was that song and all that that meant and that my friend Maria and all the other women at the table had had the thought at midnight to try to find mm -hmm. her. All of that energetically came into play with being able to switch my head around. And because prior to that night, prior to that moment, which was like the last moment of the evening, we had been at the table. And I remember laying my head down on the table yeah. sobbing. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. yeah sobbing yeah. saying, oh, gee, I think I've made the, you know, worst mistake and why did I do it and blah, blah, blah. And so to go from that moment sobbing on the table with my friends to the next day by thy grace uh, showing up was really transformative mm -hmm. for me. It was healing. It's exactly what you want mm. your friends to be there mm. to do. Number one, you want your friends to stand in the gap for you and mm -hmm. to say you are not whatever definition you're using to define yourself. Mm -hmm. So part of the problem in that moment was that I had been so accustomed to succeeding that the idea of not succeeding felt like the most giant, felt like I personally failed, mm. not like the network failed. And I later realized as I talked to lots of businessmen who would buy companies and sell companies and do ventures and lose on this thing and gain mm -hmm. on that thing that men don't look at it the same way. They, mm -hmm. This is a business that I started and this business works. It's great. If it doesn't, then I move on to the next. Right. And I was taking it so personally, like this personally means that I have failed because I am listening to, you know, all the naysayers and all of the shodden part. But that moment, um, with my friends led by Maria, mm -hmm. by thy grace, mm -hmm. uh, is, is what turn, started to turn me around. But I think, I think what, all of us need that thing to shake us up. Yeah, yeah and yeah. I think what Oprah's also you know. saying, can you imagine, like, your head is on the table, you're sobbing, you think, like, it's over, you're a failure, and, you know, with, soon after that, if people hold space for you and hold you or whatever, that you can get a new lease on life, mm -hmm. that you can look at something differently. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a kind of a life lesson yeah. for everybody. Yeah. That in that moment when you think like, uh, I just can't go I on, can't I'm go a failure. On. So it can turn around your feeling, your perspective, yeah. and your belief in yourself, right? And she went on to build a mm -hmm. successful <laughs> network. Yeah. When people said she was finished, she was done, it was over. And, you know, has gone on to, you know, extraordinary mm -hmm. achievements since then. Mm -hmm. So I think people, you know, I think it's funny, like people say to me, like, even when she did the Harry and Meghan mm -hmm. inter interview this year, like, oh, my God, Oprah can interview. I'm like, oh, yeah, that, yeah. 
hello. I mean, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know. And I remember telling you that you're like, well, you know, it has been 10 years since I was like, yeah. you know. <laughs> but people forget that how hard, yes. I mean, how hard people yes. work and work their way up. Yes. You know, it's not like Oprah became Oprah. Yes. Like there's Boom. grit. Yes. There's all nighters. Yes. There's Nashville. Yes. There's Baltimore. Yes. There's you know sitting across keys. There's working the way up. There's being yelled at. There's being told you're, you yeah. know, to this, to that, to mm -hmm. whatever. Being uh, yelled at. There's being harassed. There's being you know all kinds of looking the other way yes. in order to get ahead. I mean, yes. I think we both came up at a time where. Yeah. You know, there were aggression or aggressions all the time. Mm -hmm. Yes. But you knew that if you were to complain about it or say anything about it, you would just be out. It would be over. There was no recourse. Yeah. And uh, understanding that, that you just keep, keep your head up and mm -hmm. keep going. Keep your head up and keep For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey everybody, it's Hoda Kotb from the Today Show. I am so, so excited to tell you about my new podcast, Making Space with Hoda Kotb. I sit down with some incredible people and we'll hear some uplifting stories. Listen to Making Space now on Apple Podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Does the White House think they have an Afghanistan problem or a COVID problem? Do you believe the abortion issue should reflect the will of the people or the will of the elected officials? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Are you guys, you know, people seek both of you out for advice. I know that I do. And I know that people do, whether it's on a podcast or just in person. I know everyone's on your IG live, Maria, everyone, anytime Oprah says anything, everyone wants to lean in. Are you still learning? Like, what's the most recent kind of revelation or life lesson you've learned um, at this stage in the game? I'll start with Maria. At this state, well, that I'm continuing to grow and yeah. continuing to change and evolve. I think that, to me, I, I, if I think back, you know, 20, 30 years, I thought I'd be cooked by this time. Yeah. Or I thought I'd, like, you know, <laughs> knew everything there was to, to know. And I'm, I actually feel, you know, so alive mm -hmm. at this age. I feel lighter. I feel freer. I feel more alive. I, I am surprised by that. Hmm. I am surprised uh, by how awake in my own life I feel. Oh. So that to me is, uh, is a godsend, it's a miracle actually. And um, so I think that that's something I never thought about. Mm -hmm. Oprah, what about you? The thing that's, that, that, that I love most about my life is the sense of uh, gratitude and appreciation. I mean, I never, for one day, actually, have lost the the sense memory of being raised in dire circumstances. I remember one night um, here, uh, the frogs were so loud that I actually I could hear them through the doorway, and I went out on the balcony, and I was like, "Wow, this sounds just like Mississippi," <laughs> you know. It sounds like being on my mother's porch in Mississippi 
And then I just thought, well, it certainly is a, the frogs may sound the same, but the, the life from M Mississippi to Montecito mm -hmm. is just like an, an, an light years in, in, in difference. But I am constantly reminded of, I mean, the last time Maria was here, we were walking around um, and we just took a, took a walk around, I think socially distance walk mm -hmm. <laughs> at the time. Yeah. Um, and we were just talking about our lives and the fact that everything that has happened to me, I actually earned it. So we were talking, I think, about imposter syndrome. I was telling her about some people say they have imposter syndrome. And I'm like, I don't even know what that is mm -hmm. because everything that I have er had gotten, mm -hmm. I actually, I, I work for it. I earned it. And... You know, I live in this beautiful space surrounded mm -hmm. by trees that I love mm -hmm. um, and have been able to create this life, but have never once forgotten the life that I came from in order to mm -hmm. get to here. Mm -hmm. And so there's a sense of contentment and, and peace that comes with that, mm -hmm. that actually, I don't think I'm surprised, this is surprised by it as this, I'm just so pleased. Mm -hmm. I'm just so pleased to be in a space where I'm no longer... You know, Maria and I talked about this for a while. No longer having to make decisions that please other people mm. and don't please you. That is freeing. Yeah. That's got to be you freeing. Know? And I think the other thing that if I do say so myself that we've done well um, is I think sometimes if you're friends with somebody really well-known, then other people come to you. Can you do this? Can you get so-and-so yeah. to do that? Could you get yeah. so-and-so yeah. to do that? Could you? And I, from the very beginning, um, you know, like she was off limits, huh. period. period, period, to right. everybody and every, even in my own family. Wow. So if my brothers wanted to like <laughs> go to her and they found a way around me yeah. on their own. They do what they do. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, it's, I have been, you know, this is devoid of anything else. It's like I protect it. It's, uh, you know, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, and that, has been a challenge at times where people are like, oh, could you just please, could yeah. you just ask, oh, you could do. And um, if we've ever done things for each other and with each other, it's from us uh, to the other. And I think that that's a really, that's kind of been a big part, I think, of safeguarding this relationship, mm -hmm. or at least in my mind. This is... Yeah, I would say so too. Yeah, same here. I mean, people would try to get me to get something to you or a member of your family. And yeah, I just mm -hmm. go, I don't play that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play that. I, I don't. What? Last time I, well, last time I saw Oprah was like actually like two weeks ago because yeah. I was up there, yeah. and she she was like, I said something like we were talking about her having earned this, and I said to her, mm -hmm. you've also earned the mm -hmm. right to rest. You've also earned yeah. yes. the right to rest. Yes, and I, I, and you know, I remember you looked at me kind of like what? I was like, you've earned, you know, whatever you do now. Yeah, you know, should come from a place of total desire and whatever, because you have earned not only yes. this place that you've built. Yeah, which is. When I first saw it, before she moved in, she's like, I want to show you this thing. And I was like, this is a long way from Cross Keys. That's all yeah. I, I want to say. There wasn't even a fountain at Cross Keys. But I was like, you've also earned the right to rest. And I think that's a big... Mm -hmm. uh, Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, everybody. It's Hoda Kotb from The Today Show. I am so, so excited to tell you about my new podcast, Making Space with Hoda Kotb. I sit down with some incredible people and we'll hear some uplifting stories. Listen to Making Space now on Apple Podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. But when the school board presented its plan, it ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative. Shame. This is Southlake. All episodes available now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. I know we only have a couple minutes left because you guys have been real generous with your time, but 
What is I the- think women don't do that. I what? think women in particular don't do that. Yeah. Women don't give themselves the right to rest. Yes. yes. I remember, uh, yes, I was working with this meditation therapist uh, when I was doing tour last year, just before COVID hit hard. And we would do this big meditation in the arenas. And whenever he would say to the audience, you deserve rest, mm. you could see tears flowing wow. out of women's yeah. eyes. Yeah. Men don't cry when they're told you deserve rest, but women start to weep because the very notion that you can give yourself permission to rest is, is a foreign concept to yeah. so many women. So the fact that Maria was reminding me of that on my own doorstep, I was like, <laughs> Well, oh, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. And the no, fact that it's true. And the it's fact true. that you're, when you talk about your own mom who was like, you got to go, go, go. What's yeah. the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? I mean, rest, vacation, relaxing was not part of the plan, wasn't part of the routine. No, it wasn't yeah. allowed. And I, and that's another thing that I've always said when I have gone to visit Oprah, when I went, um, mm-hmm. she would, you know, it was, this sounds so kind of silly, but she like would say like, oh, here's a cup of coffee. I made for you. And I brought the coffee and paper to your door. And I was gonna I'm gonna cry. It was so um moving to me because I didn't that's not how I grew up. You know, nobody brought a cup of coffee or a cup of water to me. And she in a funny way, even though I had a very close relationship with my mother, I wasn't nurtured, mothered in that way, right? And she wasn't mothered in her own way. But I think in a way we have mothered each other. And, um, you know, when I, as I said, when, you know, uh, when I turned 60, I'd just gotten, you know, separated. I was in a bag. She's like, I'm going to give you a birthday party. (laughs) When I was living in a hotel, she's going to, I'm going to come and sit in the room next to you. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to bring you the coffee. I'm going to, these kind of, you know, little moments uh, in our lives, I think, at the end of the day, are what, you know, I grew up on a, in a big family and a big life, but when I close my eyes, it's the little moments. It's you having dinner with me. It's her bringing the coffee. It's having a laugh. It's, uh, you know, I think that's, I think we're all pushed to have these big, big moments, but I think it's the little moments that people don't, aren't pushed to have that really are the transforming moments. But, and also for me, you know, when you're asking that original question about words that describe the friendship, the thing that grounds me in my friendship relationship and cherishing uh, (laughs) Maria is that she really sees me. Mm. And she, and she tries to do that with everybody. I know you feel that Uh in your relationship with her. I know her children feel feel that, and that when she sees you, she I mean, she really makes an effort to really get you. Mm-hmm. And when you're in her presence, you feel like you're the most important person. And that is a real life skill to do that with people so that everybody thinks that, that they are your favorite friend, you know? <laughs> And that's what you do so well. That's one of the reasons why I cherish you so much. Oh, my oh, God. I love you. Thank you. Look at that. Thank and you. yes, and when you went through that whole phase of like, I'm calling people and I'm telling them that I love them, I'm going to say that yeah. out loud. That's yeah. because you've gone through a period where you'd lost so many people. Yeah. Yeah. I have a funny story and about Oprah. It's a habit Tell to it. like, just sometimes, sometimes Hoda, she'll just go checking in. You okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I, okay, that's one, one yeah. of my favorite yeah. texts. That she's like, she's like, I'm good, I'm good. Okay, I was just like, buddy check. Where are we? How are we? You that's know, one of my favorite yeah. texts to yeah. ever get is that one. Are you buddy okay? check? Are you buddy okay? Check. What we just, what, you I was going to say this really funny story that I had. Oprah it always makes me laugh. I was on her show, uh-huh. and I was, uh, I had a children's book out. I think it was either about death or Alzheimer's. I write always about some disastrous <laughs> part of <my> life. <laughs> It just always, my brother was like, could you write something other than like death, divorce, men, you know, whatever. But I was, re- and I I was talking, and she was interviewing me, and it was a very quiet moment in the studio, and people were emotionally having a moment. I think yeah. it was about Alzheimer's, or it was about death or something. 
And I was like, so you have this, so that right away now we need to get going. We need to like get involved and change the world. And Oprah was like, just give the people a moment. <laughs> like I just calm the F down. Just like let the people cry. We're going to commercial. Then it's in the commercial. It's like let the people have a moment. Let them cry. Let them emote. Don't give them an assignment. And I was like. Oh, 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 good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. Is the Delta variant more dangerous to kids or is it simply more transmissible? Maryland's principal of the year. I serve an amazing group of staff and students. Hey, everybody, it's Hoda Kotb from the Today Show. I am so, so excited to tell you about my new podcast, Making Space with Hoda Kotb. I sit down with some incredible people and we'll hear some uplifting stories. Listen to Making Space now on Apple Podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Make the most of your day with... Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. In a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Yeah. That was a little Eunice coming through. A little yeah. Eunice. Yeah. I remember the, my, my favorite Eunice story is I was on vacation and I was oh, on yeah. a boat out in the middle of the Caribbean. <laughs> Tell it. Oh, yeah, this is genius. Wait, I want to hear. And I had seen, I had seen, we had been docked somewhere and I had seen Eunice and said hello and all, and she goes, I think the tsunami had happened. Yeah, she goes, what are tsunami. you and Maria, you and Maria going to do about this? Yeah. What are you and Maria going to do about this? <laughs> I was like, well, it's a tsunami. I don't know what we can do. And so apparently she was not happy with it, with our conversation or what I thought the result should be in that conversation. And I'm in the middle of the ocean in the boat and Eunice has rowed out <laughs> to the boat. And they're like, there's a woman with a pink swim cap in a boat outside. And she says, she needs to see you. She needs a meeting with you. That's true. What? I come out. Yeah. I, true. 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 Story. I true. Out. And, and, and Eunice goes, I'm serious. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? I'll never forget that as long as I live. She goes, I went, I tracked Oprah down. This was over Christmas vacation. Oh. She goes, I tracked her down. I ran down the pier. I went out there. You two have got to do something. There is a tsunami. I said, well, mommy, you know, I don't. Oh, my God. I can't believe you did that. Oh, it's ridiculous that she's not doing yes, something. And you and she together. It's the both of you just sitting there. I think it's inexcusable. I was like, oh, my. It was like the day after Christmas or two days. You know, I was just like, could you leave her it alone? Was. It was on, I was on Christmas vacation. Yeah, that's true. Vacation. Well, goes, oh, I found her. All right. I found her i found her you, i'm all over her oprah were you scared of eunice i was intimidated by Eunice. Yeah. no question about yeah. it yeah no question about it because maria comes from the kind of family no no matter who you are you know you're not doing enough in the world <laughs> so, so you come and you sit at the table and and sarge wants to know what have you done lately what are you working on what are you working on next what are you working on after that maria you told this story once about uh talking about a friend who'd gone on a vacation and had decided, yeah. what was it? They were going to take honeymoon. a leave of absence or something? No, they, was that the one where they were taking a honeymoon with themselves? Was it that yes, one? Yes, a honeymoon with yeah. themselves. And what and happened? Father said, yeah, my father said, I was like, this friend of mine said, I just had this honeymoon with myself. And I was like, wow, <laughs> you imagine that? So I was like, I think I should do that. I have a honeymoon with myself. This is the most ridiculous, <laughs> selfish comment I've ever heard. That's what your dad from you. said. Yeah, he's like, outrageous. <laughs> Don't ever think like that. I was like, okay, all right, I won't, I won't, I won't. But they were like oh, that yeah, with, you know, they would be like, because when, when I brought Oprah over to the house for dinner, you know, when we were in Baltimore, they're like, what's your friend doing now? Where is she going? Does she have a TV show? You know, get the people on the TV show. Do have her do something. She should have a TV show. And she was on a TV show with this uh, other guy, and she was like the sidekick. Right, you know? right. And I was like, she doesn't really have any power on the TV show, so she can't have a Special Olympic athlete on the TV show. <laughs> Man. And she's like, okay. Hey guys, what was the most, I just have a couple more things. What was the most difficult thing you had to let go of in your life? Most difficult thing. You go first. I don't know. Ooh, Maria, I'll let you take that, babe. 
the most difficult thing I had to, um, probably my marriage, yeah, or my vision of whatever I thought my marriage was, mm. yeah. I have a lot of things. <laughs> Um, I think I had to let go of this notion that I could make everybody happy, that I could please everybody, that I was going to be the kind of person that everybody was going to actually like. I think coming to terms with the fact that you are never going to please everybody and <clears throat> you can't be who you are in the world without accepting the fact that there are going to be some people who, no matter how, you know, character driven you think you are, no matter how centered of a moral compass you think that you have that there are people like I can't stand her mm -hmm. I really don't like her you know what I mean so I think letting go of the notion that you're never going to please anybody, yeah. everybody and does that yeah. still hurt or not so much anymore not so much listen yeah. 67 yeah. things hurt less yeah <laughs> that is, what's the best thing about being this age and we'll wrap it up wow I I, I think there's a lot of uh great things about. I remember, Oprah, you telling me, like, when you turn 60, you're going to, people are going to start treating you different. And I was like, no, no, they're not. Well, when, but I started, I think, slowly in my 60s have started treating myself differently uh. and started to be kinder to myself. And as I said, I feel uh, lighter to mm -hmm. the point of, like, um, you know, I'm, uh, I think a lot of my life I spent kind of living to please my parents. Mm -hmm. Um, and please others, like she's saying. And now I'm really clear about I want to spend my time doing what I love with the people that I love. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, having more fun. And having more fun. Mm -hmm. I want to travel. Mm -hmm. I want to um, with people that I mm -hmm. love. I don't mm -hmm. want to travel by myself. I know some people like that, and I don't like that. Um, but I want to. I want to experience joy and mm -hmm. happiness and connection and deep connection. And I'm able to do that now. My kids are cooked. Yeah. Um, I'm single. I'm free. I'm um, my own boss in so many ways. I'm finally the boss of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm finally the boss of me. I love that. <laughs> Oprah, what about for you? What's the, the best, best part? The thing about how to, you want to get to this point because you have nothing else to prove. Mm. It's mm. just like Maria said. There's nothing to prove. Anything you do, you choose to do it because it's going to bring you pleasure, meaning, enjoyment, uh, mm -hmm. fulfill some kind of purpose that you want or desire, mm -hmm. but you have nothing to prove. Mm. Nothing to prove because you already proved it. Yeah, we're survivors. And I just want to say yep. that we both love you. Mm. Yeah, because we don't, we've never done this before. By we've, the way, what, right? I'm so oh, honored. We've never I, done this, and I, neither I, one of us knew what we were doing <laughs> or why we were no, doing this. I just, no, I just said I had to do it because Hoda asked. Yeah. And, was it last year, Hoda? I sent you those flowers. Hoda oh. did, there was a piece where Hoda did of me on the, on the, Today show, I looked at that piece and I literally said, I'm still alive, right? I am still living. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it was like, yeah. In memoriam, everything you've ever done. It was such a great piece. I was like, whoa. Uh, I can, yeah, she was like, I can rest now. Oh, I can rest I now. Rest now. By the way, oh my God. I, I saved but, that voicemail. But, I'll save it forever. But that's really, wow. you know, because we haven't done this and like we're friends over 40 years, wow. right? Well, so it's uh, actually. So thank you for asking us both, even though both of us just said yes because it was you. Well, I you, yeah, you. I'm on, uh, man. Y'all, this was beautiful. And we love, I love you. I love you both. Thank you, guys. Thanks for making space for us. Yeah, oh. thanks for holding space for us. Anytime. Love Let's you guys. go on a trip. Yeah. Let's go have some fun. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do Every it. Great farms. Hey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 I mean, okay. really? Really? <laughs> Come on. Let's go. Come I'm on. Doing it. Okay. Love you. Yeah. Hold on one second. Don't don't click off yet. Hold on one second, Oprah. We're just gonna do a quick picture. Hold on. Smile. This is Hoda's new podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Hoda's oh my new. God. It's called Holding Space and Making Space. Making space. Making space. Yeah. Making space. Well, thanks for making space Thank for you. us. I love you. Are I'll you call right you. Down? Okay. Bye. Bye, Oprah. Bye. 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 I love you. Bye.
Hey everybody, we see you out there in Today All Day Land. Welcome to Popstar Plus. This is the place for the latest and greatest in the world of entertainment. On today's show, we're gonna sit down with pop star, my old buddy Lance Bass of InSync fame for a pet tail interview and an update on his adorable twins. Later, you're not gonna to wanna to miss Jenna's conversation with best-selling author Lauren Groff. But first, let's get to pop star. Check out these headlines. First up in pop star today, let's get right to it. Bruce Springsteen, the boss, stopped by The Late Show with Stephen Colbert last night and unsurprisingly had a lot to talk about. Even brought his famous 50-year-old born to run guitar oh. with him. And then Colbert asked Springsteen about his many fan interactions over the years. Bruce had one that really stuck out. One of the strangest ones was I'm, I'm on my motorcycle with a friend of mine. We're coming from Lake Placid. It's, it's you know, hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of miles to get from Lake Placid. We're trying to, in an afternoon, get back to Jersey. And it starts pouring. And it's pouring and it's pouring. And we're riding and we're just, you know, it's like pins and needles hitting you. And we're soaked completely to the bone. I go through a toll booth. I'm stuck in traffic. I'm drenched. And a guy rolls down his window, hands me an eight by 10 and a pen. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> so I signed it and handed it back to him. That's a good wow. one. Yeah. Now he recognized him. He was a poor fan. <laughs> uh, next good. up, we had a big night on The Voice. Thanks for watching. Ed Sheeran joined us this season as our mega mentor. And last night, he was helping out our coaches in the knockout rounds. And Ed and Ariana took a quick second to catch up with each other ahead of their team rehearsals. I'm so excited you're here. Hi. Nice to see you. And you're married now? I am. You as well? Yeah. We had a kid. That is so exciting. I met Ed. When I had red hair, it was in 2012, he was at my manager's office just hanging and playing music. He is a brilliant songwriter. How is it yeah. sending people home? The worst. I'm like not okay. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> I've known Ariana for like a long, long time and we've worked together on songs in the past we've jammed. It's gonna be a good first season for her, I think. Toto was just mentioning that Ed has COVID now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that, was, that was shot a long time ago. Yeah, right. Yeah, just right. making just, sure. Just so right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It aired last night, but through the magic of television, <laughs> wow. that was like at eight weeks ago. That would clear that up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, another round of knockouts tonight at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, right here on NBC. Again, thanks in advance for watching. Next up, <laughs> Prince, the music icon, has won Grammys and Oscar and has been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And now he may, may receive the Congressional Gold Medal. It's the country's highest civilian honor, with past recipients being Rosa Parks. Parks, Jackie Robinson, and George Washington. Ooh. Not bad company. Wow. Minnesota's yeah. congressional delegation introduced the resolution to make this happen with Senator Amy Klobuchar saying of the late pop star, the world is a whole lot cooler since Prince was in it. He touched our hearts, opened our minds, and made us want to dance. With this new legislation, we honor his memory and contributions as a composer, performer, and music innovator. The legislation will need support from two-thirds of the House and Senate. It's got bipartisan support in Minnesota. Prince still bringing people together. <laughs> Let's go. go to the big board where Steve Kornacki is going to break it all down. <laughs> Whoa! Two-thirds? Uh, I don't know two the thirds. politics. I don't know if there's two-thirds vote for anything. Okay. Yeah. Maybe they can yeah. make it a purple medal. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll, keep, we'll keep an eye on that story. Yeah. All right. That's oh. as political as pop starts ever got. Yeah. Right. There you go. Finally, it's bracket time. We've got our round two of our Halloween horror show uh, bracket here. Let's just act like we're excited about this. Uh, no, we are. Let's go. go. We are. We are. Bracket yeah. Lantern. That's yeah. the legal okay. name. We're sticking with it. Our voting for the, went for the horror movies. Today, viewers have spoken. It was a close one, but The Shining classic took down The Exorcist. Oh, wow. 56% oh, really? wow. of the vote. People can't get enough of Jack Nicholson in that yeah. one. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Uh, Friday the 13th also moves on to the next round. It beat the Blair Witch Project. It, it, the original? it killed it. 73% yeah, yeah. of the vote. Right. Wasn't even close. On the other side of the bracket, get out. No match for Ghostface yeah. with Scream slashing away 68% of the vote. It's going up against another heavy hitter, Halloween, which took down Hoda, a nightmare. nightmare on Elm Street. Can you believe that? That was the scariest that? ever. Oh my gosh. 63%. So there you have it. The Shining. The Shining Against going Friday the, the 13th. Mm -hmm. Good matchup. Yeah. And then you've got Scream versus Halloween. Okay. I think The Shining goes all the way. Shining, yeah. how do you, yeah. By the way, vote. how do you vote? Can I just say this? Yeah. The greatest thing about The Shining, yeah. uh, Stanley Kubrick directed it. Yeah. At the time, his daughter Vivian was 17, tasked by the BBC to make a making of The Shining. 30-minute oh. documentary behind the scenes. Uh -huh. She does. It yields one of the greatest moments. The Here's Johnny scene. Yeah. Yeah. Jack Nicholson. Behind the scenes, Vivian shooting this, right. getting psyched up, getting ready for the role. They're yeah. like, oh, we're going to go yeah. stand on your market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're an ex murder. Yeah. You're an ex murder. And you see Jack getting all method. Oh, oh wow. It's one of the most And then it ends moments. up in the real film. And then that's the moment yeah, that's right. 
film. Wow. Yeah. Ooh, Fun cool. fact. The making of wow. The Shining. Do you ever do this at home? Because it, you got into it there. Do you ever, I you get into it. Why well, do it before <laughs> Pop? He does that right before Pop. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Come on. Lady Come on. A's here. Chrissy Teigen's here. That's Come it. on. Yeah. Here's Enjoy Carsey. Uh, head to today.com to cast your votes. We'll have another round tomorrow. And since this is Popstar Plus, we've got a few must-see items for you. Next up, Elton John, the music icon, has a huge single out with Dua Lipa, Cold Heart, I mean, and it's I'm climbing the charts. So and appearing on BBC around. Radio together, the two played a game called Unpopular Opinions, yeah. where callers share their, you guessed it, unpopular opinions. Except when one caller said they love Monday, Elton actually agreed. I don't mind Mondays at all. Um, to me, I look forward to every day when I wake up. I'm just glad to wake up and, and be happy. So there you go. Hmm. Well, what's the school run like with you, Elton? I must admit, David takes him to school. Um, okay. he, he has to get up at 7.15 and I can't do that. Because um, <laughs> it takes me about four hours before I can be seen in public. So, so Elton likes Mondays, but you will not be seeing him in the school drop-off line. And finally, pa Paul McCartney, Sir Paul McCartney, that is, being one of the most famous musicians in the world, you can imagine he has signed a couple of autographs in his lifetime. But no more. McCartney telling Reader's Digest he no longer will sign autographs for fans. The 79-year-old saying, and I quote, it always struck me as a bit strange. Here, can I write your name down on the back of this receipt, please? Why? We both know who I am. McCartney went on to say he also doesn't want to take selfies, which usually end up with him looking a little bit miserable, as he says. He says he'd just rather chat and exchange stories. There you go. And those are your pop star headlines. When we come back, we're going to hear from Lance Bass. Stick around. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. But when the school board presented its plan, it ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative. Shame. This is South Lake. All episodes available now. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey everybody, it's Hoda Kotb from the Today Show. I am so, so excited to tell you about my new podcast, Making Space with Hoda Kotb. I sit down with some incredible people and we'll hear some uplifting stories. Listen to Making Space now on Apple Podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Popstar Plus and get ready for some cuteness. Here we go, Lance Bass joined us for our My Pet Tale series, introducing us to his fur babies, Chip and Dale, and sharing how he thinks they'll be as siblings to his new twins. Yeah, we do always have little voices for them. And they kind of talk like this. I'll take that. Um, and then we think Dale has a slight Australian accent just because um, we have these backstories for them that uh, he secretly wants to be a movie star dog and he really wants to be Australian. And so we have like little Aussie voices coming out of him. All right, these are my puppies, Chip and Dale, uh, which is very fitting because they're little rascals and they act like Chip and Dale from, from Disney. And they're mixed breed rescues, so we don't know exactly what they are, but we're assuming they're Chihuahua Terrier. Um, and Dale might even have a little schnauzer in him because he's got, he's got that beard. Um, but the sweetest dogs ever. The way we got Chippendale was definitely different from our other rescues. Uh, we weren't really in the market for another dog. Uh, we already had one you know, at the house and we were fostering others. Uh, so these came to us in the most Hollywood way. Uh, it's, it's gaggy, but uh, Kate Beckinsale found these dogs, um, this litter, um, and rescued them. And she didn't know what to do with them. So she called me and said, I have a litter of dogs, they need help. And so 
I took them, I gave them to Lisa Vanderpump for her new shelter that wasn't even open yet. Um, so they went and lived there and all of them got adopted uh, immediately except Chip and Dale. And they were the last two in the litter. Um, I walked into Vanderpump Dogs and just fell in love with them. I'm like, okay, we'll take them home. We'll find them a good home. We'll, you know, we'll foster them until we find them a great home. Uh, and they have not left the house yet. <laughs> it's so weird because when I'm naming dogs, uh, they just come to me easily. Every rescue I've ever had, I've named them kind of on the spot. Chippendale, when I saw them at Vanderpump Dogs, they were, all they were doing was, you know, fighting like this, just like a dust ball of just wrestling the whole time. And it reminded me of, you know, Chippendale, you know, chipmunks. Uh, so immediately was like, it's Chip and Dale, uh, and it just stuck, and they really live up to their names. Well, it's, it's funny because, you know, they're twins. My dogs are twins, but they have completely different personalities. Um, the one that's a little smaller, Chip, he's the boss. Like, he came, you know, he was number one in the litter, controlled everything, uh, although he's probably the runt of it, too, because he was the smallest of all the dogs, uh, which is probably why he has such an attitude. Uh, but definitely, he, he controls the house and, uh, and puts Dale in his place. Um, loves attention, just human attention. He just needs it. He'll crawl inside you and cut He gives the best hugs. Um, but if Dale tries to get the hugs, he will usher him away, which is like so mean. So we give Dale his own quality time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Chip's the boss and Dale's just a little teddy bear that uh, sometimes feels a little abused by his brother. <laughs> It'll be very interesting to see how Chip and Dale are with the twins. Um, I'm, I'm guessing they're going to be really great because they are fun little gentle dogs uh, and super sweet. But you just never know. And of course, we're going to be very, you know, careful at the beginning of introducing them. Uh, I hear if you, you know, it, it's a better you know, to bring in maybe the baby blanket first, let them sleep with it one night to get used to the smell. Um, and then just kind of a slow introduction. Um, let them sniff them a good bit and we'll cuddle a little bit and then hopefully they'll become the best brother and sister ever. It is so strange how dogs can really pick up on your energy and your, your mood. Uh, and there's, you know, several times in the last you know, four years that, you know, you'll have bad days and, you know, some disasters happen in your life and it's like they just know. Um, and the way that they kind of like curl up to you and kind of give you that look of like, you know, I'm here for you. It always comes at the best time. Uh, there's nothing better than a puppy hug. My pets have made my life so much better. I, I do, I mean, there's studies on this saying that, you know, dogs extend your life and I can feel that. And the love that you give and the love that you receive, it, you can't match it anywhere. It's the only unconditional love you'll ever receive. And it's just a beautiful thing. And, you know, they're there for every life moment. Um, and I'm glad that we get to share that. Oh, that is adorable overload. Coming up on Popstar Plus, Jenna gets the scoop on author Lauren Groff's latest novel, Matrix. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Controversy in South Lake tonight after teens posted a racist video. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. My children were told Rosa Parks is dead. You all have to sit in the back of the bus. But when the school board presented its plan, this small town fight ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative of rampant racism. Shame. This is South Lake, an NBC News podcast. All episodes available now. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. In a mere 30 minutes. Oh, oh, shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. 
Hey, everybody, it's Hoda Kotb from The Today Show. I am so, so excited to tell you about my new podcast, Making Space with Hoda Kotb. I sit down with some incredible people and we'll hear some uplifting stories. Listen to Making Space now on Apple Podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We are back here on Popstar Plus. Author Lauren Groff is a two-time National Book Award finalist. And for this edition of Open Book, she shared the secrets of her success with Jenna. Take a listen and learn what inspired some of her best work. Did you read in 2015 when former President Obama said that Fates and Furies was one of his favorite books of the year. Did that make it to yeah. your make it into your into your? Knowledge? I passed out. I actually I like blacked out and I came to again and it was kind of amazing. But I have to tell you too, he is such a, like a kind human that he actually wrote me a letter. Who does that? That's amazing, oh. right? I know. I mean, so come when, on. did you frame that? What do you do yes. with a letter like that? It's framed. It's in my study upstairs. <laughs> I am so excited to have one of my favorite writers. She wrote, you may not know this, but one of my favorite books that I've ever read, my sister gave it to me, Fate and Furies, was written by Lauren Groff, and she's here to talk with us about all things reading and books, and um, she has a new incredible book out. I have it right here um, called The Matrix, <laughs> and oh, you have it right there too, so we're gonna talk I do. <laughs> about that as well, which I can't, wait to hear about your new novel but first when like as a little girl when did you first fall in love with reading I was always a big reader because I was incredibly shy and I couldn't really talk in my family I have an older brother who's just like so large um and so loud he just sort of sucked up all the oxygen in the room and so I just sort of like creep over to the corner and read my books and feel <laughs> alive more alive than at the dinner table for sure have you told your brother that? Because I feel like my sister might <laughs> tell me that and it might break my heart. <laughs> oh, yeah, it wouldn't break his heart. I don't think he would hear me. He'd be so busy talking. <laughs> so what was, do you remember the most impactful book? Was there one that you read where you thought, like, I want to do this? Not only do I love to read, but I also want to write. Well, do you remember the Edith the Hamilton book of Greek mythology that she sort of glossed over all of the, the myths and I would just read it and just feel sucked into these these ideas and these stories from thousands of years ago. Do you remember that? I do. I remember what you're talking about and you loved that so much that you knew you wanted to write. Yeah, basically, yeah. I mean, I didn't think that um, there were any actual living writers around because the only people I read up until college, was they were basically dead. So suddenly <laughs> I started taking um, fiction classes in college and I started reading people like Joy Williams, Grace Paley, Laurie Moore, great, great short story writers. And I realized, oh my gosh, they're actually living humans, women who um, are out there writing these incredible books. But up until then, I really only read books basically set before 1950. You write both and write so well, novels and short stories. Do you have a genre that you that you like more? Is one more natural for you? Is one more challenging? Well, it's, um, it's kind of a beautiful thing because you think about a novel for years, right? You wake up with it, it's like a marriage, you know, like sometimes yes. you just are very irritated <laughs> with your novel and you can't stand it and so you have to go to the other room. Um, but I wait for short stories to come to me fully and a lot of times I just sort of throw them in the back of the head and they sort of spin in the back of the head until one day they sort of collide with something else and become a short story. So it's a very different process, I think. Um, short stories for me are more like poetry than they are like uh, novels um, in, in that way where you sort of sit and you try to do the whole thing in one go. If you're loving Jenna's conversation with Lauren Groff, stick around because we've got more of their chat right after the break. News is more than a headline. 
It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. And we're back with more Popstar Plus and more of Jenna's open book conversation with author Lauren Groff. Matrix is so cool and so wildly different from anything that I've read really ever, but also very different from your previous books. Will you tell us a little bit about it and where the genesis for the novel came from? Sure. So uh, when I was in college, for a while, I thought I wanted to be a medievalist. So I was taking uh, Ancien Français, which is Old French, and I was doing a lot of translations from Old French into contemporary English. And I fell in love with this, uh, the first female poet, known poet in French. Her name is Marie de France. And she was this extraordinary writer who did Les, which are basically like fantastic short stories in poetry form and nobody knows anything about her. So this book is sort of my um, recreation of this life of someone we don't know anything about. Basically, but having I, I took images from her work and sort of built a narrative around that. And so this story talks about uh, female power, about um, creating your own spirituality, about sort of uh, both the, the cage and um, the protection of a, a utopian feminist ideal state. Right? So it's a, it's a very wild, very strange book for sure. It's so much fun. I want to read this quote from The Guardian because I feel like, I don't know, like you should sew this on a pillow or something. It said, it is a heroic pushback against the way we live now, against waste, against the artificial environments in which we find ourselves maintained by corporations, but equally against the pressures on women to be flawless, effortlessly excellent mothers, wives, sisters, lovers, friends within this dire state of affairs. I mean, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> did you sew this on a pillow? And do you feel like this accurately describes the matrix or, or others, other writing that you've done? So I don't read my own reviews. That's the first <laughs> time I've ever heard this or seen it. Or, or And now I'm sort of blushing and I'm feeling a little hot right now. <laughs> so um, that's amazing. Thank you, Guardian. Um, so <laughs> a matrix is, you know, I would hope that that's what matrix is, right? So when you write historical fiction uh, with a voice sort of that's a 21st century voice, what you're trying to do is do almost a vibration between past and present, a sort of uh, the, the the present is looking back into the past and the past is looking forward into the present. And it's sort of like a, a tuning fork in a certain way. So I would hope very much that this book about the 12th century is actually talking about the 21st century uh, and uh, women and men in the 21st century. It's, it's just really interesting. And I know I don't watch myself on television. It's my idea of, of hell. And so I can, I can <laughs> understand why reading your reviews would be tricky. But did you read uh, in 2015 when um, President Obama, former President Obama, said that Fates and Furies was one of his favorite books of the year. Did that make it to yeah. your make it into your into your I passed out. <laughs> I actually I like blacked out and I came to again and it was kind of amazing. But I have to tell you too, he is such a, like a kind human that he actually wrote me a letter. Who does that? 
That's amazing, uh, right? I know. I mean, so come when on. did you frame that? What do you do yeah. with a letter like that? It's framed. It's in my <laughs> study upstairs. <laughs> to get a letter that appraises your work, I'm sure, is something that you'll never forget. Ever, ever. No, it's the most beautiful thing, right? Because a lot of times books are one-sided, right? They only go out into the world and you never get to see what a reader feels about it. And then to have someone actually turn around and tell you exactly how they feel in a nice way uh, is really, really <laughs> wonderful. I've gotten hate mail too, don't worry. I mean, I think we all have. Um, but but then the, the thoughtful, the kind, the generous uh, responses, the people who see what you're attempting to do and sort of go with you. I mean, that, that will like feed me for months at a time if I get one good letter like that. It's wonderful. What writers, like what books can you recommend to us? What have you read recently that you love? Okay, so I'm so excited. I actually wrote things down. Um, <laughs> there's a book called How to Wrestle a Girl, and it's by Vanita Blackburn. It's, it's a wild short story collection. Um, it, it, I'm it, it's, it's really good. Um, there's a, Oh, there's a book uh, by Sarah Mangusu. I don't know if you know her work. I think she's like a genius of a okay. very real level. It's not out yet, but it'll be out in January and it's called Very Cold People. And it's about a sort of growing up in a very waspy family in a very waspy <laughs> town. And I like saw my entire childhood reflected back to me and I, and I still have shivers from it. Um, I haven't read it yet, but I'm so excited to read Katie Kitamura's Intimacies, which is her newest book. Um, she's so smart and she's so uh, thoughtful and every sentence is, does something, it's a, slightly tweaks the prose in a direction you don't expect it to go. So I think that's really, really amazing. And the last book um, that I read recently, it's not a super recent book, but uh, it's called Obit by Victoria Chang, mm -hmm. and it's uh, a collection of uh, poems, and it is so moving. It's about grief, and it's oh. just like, it's like a tsunami. It's such an amazing I, book. Oh, I love reading poetry um, to start my day, so I'm gonna get that. Yay. You know what, um, you know who my, my Oprah recommended this book oh that God. Hoda gave me for yeah. Christmas? Have you ever read I have that. Yeah, Don't you I have, have it on the shelf. <laughs> it's such a nice, I'm so, like, you can see my nerdy handwriting. Like I like, <laughs> send this to people and they're like, wow, you're in one of your poetry moods. But um, I love I'm going to get, I, I'm going to start my day with some grieving poetry because why not? Yes. Um, yes. I could talk to you for 1 million years, but I'm going to be respectful of your time. Congratulations on this thank newest you. book. And thank you so much, Lauren. Thank you, Jenna. I really love talking to you and have thank a wonderful you. I day. I loved it too. I thank loved you. it. Thank you guys. Through her open book series and, of course, her book club, Jenna's introduced us to some absolutely amazing authors, and she'll have many more enlightening conversations to come right here on Popstar Plus. Check out this next conversation on Popstar Plus. Okay, so if you want to feel good, you just have to listen to a Jason Mraz song. I mean, just pick one. Just run your finger down the list and pick one, and you're going to be in a good mood. Uh, Jason has beautiful songs, beautiful lyrics. So, of course, I was curious about what Jason's favorite quote was. So, Jason, welcome. So, you're on Quoted By. So, of all the quotes out there in the world, which one uh, speaks to you? Even after all this time, the sun never says to the earth, you owe me. And look what happens with a love like that. It lights up the whole sky. Oh my God, that is so beautiful. I love that. Why does that speak to you? What is it about that, that poem? It's really about giving with no expectation in return. It's about continuing to be love in the face of adversity, um, continuing to love those who may not love us back, continuing to give and give and give to the best of our ability. Um, without necessarily needing to be recognized for that, you know, just continue to shine your light and help light up this world. Yeah, I think that speaks to the humility, too, because I whenever I learn about a friend or somebody who gave someone something and you learned about it secondhand or third hand, you just realize and it makes you want to do the same. I mean, it makes you want to 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 be that kind of a giver, too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Jason, thank you for sharing that quote. It's a good one. Thanks. Just want to thank you for joining us. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Have a great day.
A big hello to all of you in today all day land watching our digital show today in 30. We see you. And we love that you decided to spend part of your Tuesday with us. We had another busy morning in Studio 1A. Let's break it down. All right. First, severe weather. States of emergency have been declared along the East Coast as a powerful nor'easter slams into our region with heavy rains and high winds. Folks in the middle of the country and out west dealing with dangerous storms of their own. Al, of course, will have a full forecast straight ahead. Plus, is there potential hope on the horizon in the fight against breast cancer? We've got an exclusive announcement to share from the Cleveland Clinic on an important new development. Plus, Chrissy Teigen, she'll join us here in studio. It has been a year of challenges for her. She'll open up about the lessons she's learned. All that and more is just ahead, so let's get started. I can't wait one minute longer for <laughs> Today in 30. First, NBC Stephanie Gosk out in the elements here in New York. Hey, Steph, morning. Hey, Hoda, good morning. It is raining hard now. It has been raining hard like this all night long. There is a flash flood watch in effect here in New York City, but there are warnings for flash floods in New Jersey. It has been a, a, a terrible night. They are expecting a month's worth of rain in just 24 hours. And while this storm is not going to drop as much as Hurricane Ida did, they have concerns. 11 people were killed in that storm who live in basement apartments in this city. And here in Queens was one of the places hardest hit. They've sent out construction workers to some of the hard hit areas, those basement apartments, to clear out the drains and bring in water pumps. The mayor of this city with a stark warning for people who live in those apartments. It's time to get out. Overnight, a ferocious nor'easter walloping the tri-state area and southern New England, with torrential rain and powerful winds causing streets to flood and downing trees and power lines. Coastal communities preparing for a potentially devastating storm surge. We can't we can't fool around with this because we, we will lose a neighborhood if we do. This following days of wild weather out west, where a phenomenon known as a bomb cyclone pounded Oregon, Washington, and California, becoming the strongest storm ever recorded in the region. Eight million residents under flood and wind alerts. Individuals are stuck in uh, a large amount of water here. In San Francisco, powerful winds blew over semi-trucks like toys, submerged vehicles left abandoned in the road. Backyards turned into rivers, forcing evacuations. Other residents using any means necessary to keep the rising water out of their homes. It's all in the house. The drought and wildfire scorched ground, unable to absorb the onslaught of rain. Hillsides turning into landslides. This one in Northern California, cutting off access to a major highway. Nearly 100,000 people are still without power. Meanwhile, in the Midwest, heavy rain and wind causing surging waves on Lake Michigan. While tornadoes, some as powerful as EF3s, carved paths of destruction across Missouri and Illinois can't open rip the lid off the house. The cleanup here just beginning as the powerful storm strengthens and moves up the east coast. Residents now bracing for the worst. So New York City was accused of being flat-footed during Hurricane Ida. That's not the case this time around particularly when it comes to the transportation system. They've had hundreds of crews overnight at 50 different subway stations, making sure that those vents were closed off and that the grates above ground, including the gutters, were cleared out so that the subways didn't get shut down. Right now, they are actually up and running. You know, this rain is going to continue all day long. It's going to turn into heavy winds, 25 to 35 mile an hour gusts here in the city, out on Long Island, 50 miles an hour. And that st the storm is going to move up up through the Northeast all day long, and you're going to have those same conditions in places in Massachusetts and Maine. Guys, back to you. Wow, Steph, thank you. Lots for Al to keep his eye on. He's in its coast to coast this morning. Yeah, yeah unfortunately, story. we're going to focus right here in the Northeast. We've got this nor'easter, uh, so an East Coast storm that provo uh, produces coastal winds from the Northeast. Check, that's what's happening today on into tonight. We've been talking about bomb cyclone out West. Well, we could be seeing that here in the East. What's a bomb cyclone? Uh, a cyclone, it's when a system goes into what they call bombogenic that's intensifying with a pressure drop of 24 millibars in 24 hours. It's still too early to tell, but that could happen later on this afternoon or this evening, creating a possible bomb Easter coming up the coast. We are looking at heavy rain, flash flood watches and warnings for 39 million people in the northeast of New England. You can already see that heavy rain moving up from upstate New York into New York and 
parts of New England starting to dry out a little bit in Philadelphia. These two systems will merge, slowly intensify, and move away with the heaviest rain today into New England. Then tomorrow, it moves off the coast, but behind it, very strong, gusty winds. So for today, widespread uh, flooding. We're looking at this flooding that could be made worse because of the leaves that are down, clogging storm drains. So we're going to be watching that right throughout New England. Rainfall amounts anywhere from two to four inches, could be upwards of five. The strongest winds are going to be along the New England coast with wind gusts at hurricane force possible, and that will bring some power outages, and those outages worsen because, of course, we still have leaves on the trees, and those could come down, bringing down more power lines. We're going to continue to track this. We've got a lot more to get to this morning, including the latest on that tragic shooting that happened on the set of Alec Baldwin's new film. Yeah, as investigators try to determine what exactly went wrong, new details are emerging about the troubled production there in New Mexico. Meantime, the incident is fueling calls for sweeping change on the sets of other movie and TV productions. NBC sees Miguel Almaguer is in Santa Fe with more. Hey, Miguel, good morning. Hey guys, good morning. So over the last couple of days, investigators have been coming and going from this ranch here behind me, leaving with bags of evidence, including firearms and spent shell casings. Tomorrow, they'll hold a major press conference as we try to learn exactly what went wrong here. The set of rust now on indefinite pause as Santa Fe sheriffs look to determine what caused the fatal accident. Had two people accidentally shot on a movie set by a prop gun the deadly shot fired by Alec Baldwin from a prop gun he believed was safe. His wife, Hilaria, posting on Instagram, my heart is with Helena, her husband, her son, their family and loved ones, and my Alec. Cinematographer Helena Hutchins passed away after being hit in the chest. The shot also wounding director Joel Souza. According to a search warrant affidavit, Baldwin was given the gun by assistant director Dave Halls, who grabbed one of three prop guns that was set up by the armorer off a cart, left outside of the structure due to COVID-19 restrictions. Neither Halls nor armorer Hannah Gutierrez-Reed have spoken publicly about the tragedy, but this is not the first time Halls has been criticized for safety issues. In 2019, he was fired by another film production after a gun went off unexpectedly, injuring a member of the sound crew. But industry experts say only the armorer or the prop master should be handling weapons on the set, not the assistant director. I'll be honest with you, that AD would have broken fingers if they picked up a gun off my cart. Uh, that does not happen. Armorer Clay Van Sickle says the difference between a blank and a live or dummy round is easy to spot. I would click through six times so everybody could hear that nothing happens. It's literally that simple and it takes seconds and there's no reason not to do it. Veteran prop master Neil Zaromsky says he sensed warning signs on rust even before filming began. I turned the job opportunity down on Rust because I felt it was completely unsafe. Zaromsky says one big red flag was that producers took two distinct and challenging jobs, assistant prop master and armorer, and combined them into one. I impressed upon them that there were great concerns about that, and they really didn't really respond to my concerns about that. Hutchins' death has fueled an outcry for improved safety on film and TV sets, an industry in mourning and seeking answers for what went wrong. And Miguel, this wasn't the first incident with a prop gun on that set, so what more do we know about it? Well, how do we know there has been multiple misfires on this set during previous days, according to production company officials who actually walked off the set the morning of the shooting. And we also know there's been a call for legislative change as to what kind of weapons are used on sets. Some are saying that real guns should never be used on sets from now moving forward. Hoda. All right, Miguel Almaguer for us in Santa Fe. Miguel, thank you. Stick around because there is much more coming up on Today in 30. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. 
Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. Is the Delta variant more dangerous to kids, or is it simply more transmissible? Maryland's principal of the year. I serve an amazing group of staff and students. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Today. Let's go. Is the Delta variant more dangerous to kids, or is it simply more transmissible? Maryland's principal of the year. I serve an amazing group of staff and students. Does the White House think they have an Afghanistan problem or a COVID problem? Do you believe the abortion issue should reflect the will of the people or the will of the elected officials? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. We are back 810 with Pink Power Today, our special series for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Yeah, this morning, the Cleveland Clinic announcing a major advance in research. NBC's Ann Thompson is here with exclusive details. Hey, Ann, good morning. Mm -hmm. Good morning. You know, the potential here is enormous because of all the advances we've made in breast cancer treatment over the years. Triple negative breast cancer remains the most challenging to treat, basically because chemotherapy is the mainstay of that treatment. Now, a first step in a still long road to create a vaccine to prevent this deadly form of breast cancer. It is the most aggressive and lethal form of breast cancer, triple negative, with none of the biological characteristics that typically respond to hormonal and targeted therapies. But this morning, new hope, as the Cleveland Clinic tests an experimental vaccine. How significant could this be? Well, if we could prevent 12 to 15 percent of breast cancer and the most deadly type of breast cancer, it would be a major step. The experimental vaccine is 10 years in the making. The study will involve 18 to 24 patients who have completed treatment for early stage triple negative breast cancer in the past three years. They are tumor free, but at high risk for recurrence. Each participant will receive three vaccinations two weeks apart. The experimental vaccine is designed to target a lactation protein called alpha-lactobumin, found in the majority of triple negative breast cancers. It should activate and expand the body's T cells to attack the protein, killing the cancer cells before they grow into tumors. What we're trying to find out in this phase one trial is what dose we should use in future studies. And that dose will be determined on the basis of side effects and the immune response. Who could benefit? The American Cancer Society says triple negative breast cancer accounts for 10 to 15 percent of all breast cancers. It is more common in women under 40, African-American women, and those with a BRCA1 mutation. I do want to say that um, we are aiming to help people. We, I don't want to raise uh, false hopes, but we do have hope. To prevent a deadly form of breast cancer. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. But when the school board presented its plan, it ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative. Shame. This is Southlake. All episodes available now. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're going to do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. What Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day.
The Meet the Press Chuck Todd Cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Controversy in South Lake tonight after teens posted a racist video. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. My children were told Rosa Parks is dead. You all have to sit in the back of the bus. But when the school board presented its plan, this small town fight ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative of rampant racism. Shame. This is South Lake, an NBC News podcast. All episodes available now. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We are back with a new series. It's called How to Adult. It's a refresher, essentially, for some of life's essentials that we often overlook. And this is a really good one because a lot of us don't think about our appliances until they stop working. Yeah. So investigative and consumer con correspondent Vicki Wynn has what we need to know before our fridge goes on the fritz or if we're in the market for something new. I prefer my new title, Sister of the Show. Sister That's right. The show. That's <laughs> it. I'm like, how come I don't have papers? And then I realize, oh, no, that, That's I'm right. to put it up in here. Exactly. We're talking about we, we need these. You've right. got your head. Right. Uh, so as we get into this, uh, with supply chain issues we've been talking about, before you decide to get a new appliance, what decisions do you need to make, like to, whether to junk it, fix it, try to wait wait it out? Yeah, so right now what we're talking about is like what, what makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. And what you're seeing is a lot of people who are in the market for appliances, and if you're, you are one of them, then you know the news is grim, very hard to find. Some are taking months, even over a year to get, whether it's a washer, dryer, a range, a fridge, they're all in the same boat. So you've got to be prepared to wait, be patient. Uh, we're talking about the supply chain issues. It's really affecting the appliance market. And uh, uh, folks are saying that they are very, very, very frustrated, right? And they're trying to turn from big box retailers to the independent retailers as well to try and get selection. But you got pandemic remodeling, oh, yeah. you got new builds, and we're at home more. So things are breaking down because we're constantly opening and closing the refrigerator and using things more. So that's where we are, right? We got yeah. Three kids, a party of five, yeah. and ours is on the fritz, both of them. Ooh. So, yeah. The and kids the are washer the and, dryer. <laughs> and the whole thing, the whole kit and caboodle. So then what are you supposed to do? Like, are you supposed to try to wait it out? We're to the point now where we can't wait it out. You pull the clothes out. We try to do the dry cycle like twice, yeah. and they're if not getting dry. Yeah, you need to replace, then yeah. the strategy is to go in and check out the big box stores first. Uh, also check out your independent retailers because you might get more of a concierge service. But I've got two words for you, open box. Two mm. more words, floor model, mm. and one more word, warranty. So mm. those are the things you're looking for. Be flexible. Consider something that might have a scratch or somebody returned it, but it's in brand new condition. They right. just can't sell it as brand new. Mm. That's the best way. Sometimes do you just walk in and day. ask for that? I do. I've been to stores where they'll even have a section where it okay. says, like, open box or mm. floor models, right? You want to be really flexible, too. Maybe you wanted the ice maker that makes the perfectly round ice balls. Right. Do you have to have that, or would you rather just get a fridge? Mm. Just know that there may be fewer choices, fewer deals available. Things are you can still get things, mm -hmm. but you might have to expand your search a bit. And you have to make sure I, I, one of the points there, and I, I was guilty of this, I measured wrong oh my gosh. for a, a washer-dryer combo and got it home and it didn't. I couldn't get it through the door. That's <laughs> brutal. Measure, measure, measure. Because you might think the space is big enough, but the hallway or the it's door true. like what happened to you, and that's yeah. the last thing you need happening right now after you've waited months for an appliance to arrive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so let's say, okay, I'm, I'm, I I'm can't wait for a new one. Uh, my other, my old one is a little on the fritz. What what are my recourses there? Okay. Because I would think the same supply chain issues and employee employment issues are That's affecting true. the handyman and the fix-it guys. It's the greatest time to be an appliance repair person for mm -hmm. sure because you have jobs out the wazoo. So first thing, check your warranty. Is it under warranty? If Odds are if it's older, it probably isn't. But check, maybe you have a home warranty that you've forgotten about. It's one of those bills that comes every year. Maybe it's $500 to $1,000 depending on what is covered in mm -hmm. your house. But we had that happen where a fridge broke down, but we have a home warranty. It's covered. The fridge is covered. $75 bucks for a repair person to come out and if they can't fix it they'll replace the whole thing mm -hmm. which is really helpful the next step is if you have to call a licensed repair person check yelp check angie's list look at the one star reviews too to make sure you know and make sure they are an authorized repair person for the model that you have here's a buying tip too okay. when you're looking consider maybe a refrigerator or a device that is has less bells and whistles mm -hmm. because all of those little electronic chips and mm. parts are harder to yeah. fix so the simpler the machine the easier the repair the easier 
your, it is defined apart as well. So those are things to consider. You could go the DIY route. There are so many great YouTube videos out there, but just know that if you do that, you may void some yeah. other part of your warranty. I did fix my dishwasher. Oh, I had a problem, really? A That's drain, the thing. Had a drainage problem. Went on YouTube yeah. and worked. It actually worked. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So last but not least, for people who say, you know what, maybe I shouldn't take this fridge or this washer dryer for granted. Are there things you can do to almost prolong his life? Yes, I think that's so important. As they say, an ounce of prevention is sure. worth a pound of cure. These are simple things that you can do. Clean the refrigerator coils. That means mm -hmm. you pull it out. And yep. again, videos on YouTube to see how to do it correctly. We've never but done cleaning any of these things, things is not hard. Cleaning the um, filters in your dishwasher, yeah. mm -hmm. cleaning the vents in your dryer. Those things really help to prolong the life of your machine and make it more efficient. So you might save on your electric bill as uh -huh. well. Hey, quickly, uh, warranties. Yes. Are they worth the money? The extended warranty. Nowadays, with these devices, with all the, of these chips, consider that because they're sold at the point of sale. When you get that device, it is worth considering. All right. Yeah, Thank you. it's good. Save you a headache. Hey, Not a single note. It's okay. all in there. It's all in there. All right. <laughs> Controversy in South Lake tonight after teens posted a racist video. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. My children were told Rosa Parks is dead. You all have to sit in the back of the bus. But when the school board presented its plan, this small town fight ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. The false narrative of rampant racism. Shame. This is South Lake, an NBC News podcast. All episodes available now. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey everybody, it's Hoda Kotb from the Today Show. I am so, so excited to tell you about my new podcast, Making Space with Hoda Kotb. I sit down with some incredible people and we'll hear some uplifting stories. Listen to Making Space now on Apple Podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. Is the Delta variant more dangerous to kids or is it simply more transmissible? Maryland's Principal of the Year. I serve an amazing group of staff and students. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Chrissy Teigen has always found joy in the kitchen, and after a difficult year, she turned to her family's recipes for comfort. She's out with her most personal mm. cookbook yet. It's called Cravings All Together. Chrissy, we're so happy you're here. I'm so happy to be here. I never get to be with you guys, so I'm I excited. Know. And it's a beautiful, beautiful cookbook. It really cookbook. is. And I think the most beautiful thing I have to say was when I flipped the page and I just saw for Jack. For Jack. For yeah, Jack. Yeah, And that, that was so touching and beautiful, and it was important <laughs> yeah, to dedicate it to Yeah, he was all throughout the book. I mean, he's still such a big part of our family life. You know, we're ties, so we very much embrace death, and we kind of are very vocal about it with our with our kids, and it's just, it, I, yeah, I just, there was no way I, I could get around not thinking about him the whole process, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can name personally mm -hmm. many women that mm -hmm. you helped Thank by you. sharing your story. I wonder what was it like to do that so publicly yeah. and and how about talking to the kids about it? Oh, it was so weird um, to, I think the, uh, you know, when I first shared the photos, a lot of people were very thrown off by them. You know, it was such a personal uh, weird thing and it was very weird for me to ask John to take the photos or have like this kind of documentation of this process. But I thought, I really genuinely in that moment thought that it would be helpful to so many women out there. And talking to the kids about it is really magical because my mother obviously lives with us and she brings in that like old school Thai sensibility of they're always around us, they're in the air, they're in the mm. sky. Oh. You know, we have his, we have his ashes next to my bed and my kids, like we, we joke about it, but like when we go on vacation and things, they're like, don't forget Jack and mm -hmm. like we'll pack him <laughs> up and we bring him and I'm like one day we'll release him and you know, uh, but but for right now, it really helped explain death to them. Like, you know, it was it was easy to, it was kind of confusing to tell them like what had happened in the hospital, but once they saw the ashes, they realized, oh, this happened, you know, um, he's not coming back. Like it's, you know, it was very, it, it became very real to them and they draw him in school and things, so oh, yeah. There are so many profound things that are, that are happening in your life right yeah. now. The thing that you revealed earlier today was that you are 100 days sober. Yeah. And that's a big deal. It that is. is a big deal. 
why did you make that decision, Chrissy? To I hadn't gone aside from being pregnant. I hadn't gone more than a day or two ever in uh, since I started drinking at 20 or so. So I uh, I just really never had that period of time of like clear thought. You know, even yeah. even when I was. And if I wasn't drinking, it was because I was hungover or something. Yeah. So it was just like I, I, the whole detox out of my system of it and realizing you get this like this this high from from having energy and being able to play with your kids yeah. and roll on the floor with them. And I mean, there's just, I, you know, my best friends, my closest friends, my family, everybody's noticed a difference. And there's really no I still am like I hate working in absolutes. So I'm like, am yeah. I ever going to have a glass of wine again? Or mm -hmm. um, and all I know is it like just did not serve. It just doesn't serve me anymore. Like I'm not fun on it. I don't I don't dance. Yeah. I don't yeah. like, I'm not a better person. Um, I, I, yeah, it's just not for me. I appreciate, like I told your producers, I was like, make sure they know that like, if they want to drink, they want to do anything. They can do what they want. Was there something that happened? Was there a reason? Was there like a moment where you said like this? Catalyst. Yeah. Was there something that made Well, I had stop? been, I've been struggling with it, honestly, for, for the past couple of years was when I knew it was kind of an issue. Uh, I, I, I mean, I just like, even like doing interviews and things yeah. like I, I would think I needed a glass of wine or, yeah. um, um, and then it just started to get embarrassing, like at award shows and things. And everyone memes it and thinks it's funny and cute, right? That that like, you fall, you fell asleep or something yeah. at the Oscars. Or but, I mean, it's it's really it became embarrassing. And I am obviously with someone like John, who is. It's hard to be around somebody that's so respected and so mm -hmm. beloved and so loved. And you, I just was like, I can't be the messy one. I just can't. Mm. This is embarrassing. And yeah. I don't want to uh, waking up every, in the morning and being like, oh, uh, like, what did I say? Yeah. Like, that's so embarrassing. Yeah. And then it was just not worth it. That feeling is not worth yeah. it. Not to mention the headaches and everything. But that feeling of embarrassment is you're, just you're such. By the way, you're such an honest yes. person. I just want to say like you're just oh. saying oh. it. So many people because yeah. I think a lot of women are sober yeah. curious. Yeah. Well, with, quit like a woman helped yes. me alive. That that book was really important for me. You learn about like the patriarchy and how, and really how uh, we're so drawn as mothers to alcohol and how it yeah. normalized it is for mothers to day drink and. Um, uh, day drinking for yeah. me was like a very, oh, that's honestly only, like, that was the only drinking yeah, for me. Yeah. I didn't even call it day drinking. That was just like, that's how I did it. And um, yeah, and we joke about like kikiing with our friends and going to brunch and getting wasted. Yeah. And like, it's just, yeah, it's not good. You mm -hmm. know, this year has been uh, very difficult for mm -hmm. you. Yeah. And I wonder what it feels like to be here mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. and to share your story. Honestly, your book. it feels so good to just like even be back and seeing you and being out mm. and being allowed to t come back and tell my story and 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 to be able to share this book with everybody but to yeah it's obviously so like it's been like heartbreaking this past mm -hmm. year so to be out again and back again, it just feels really good. And I feel really clear and I feel very happy and I mean, it's, we I can just, see like, it. We done. really can. Chrissy, congratulations, your book is number one. That's wild, thank you. What is it like being back in Studio 1A? It feels so good to be out, it feels good to be in New York City. John and I are New Yorkers at heart, we lived here, we met, I mean, when we first met, we lived here together, so it's so good to be back in our apartment and to be here at the studio and being here for the fourth hour because I never get to do it. I know, and we love you here. <laughs> and in the commercial break, you just found out that your book is number one. Crazy! How do you feel? So happy, such a relief, and I'm, now I'm like waiting for the reviews, oh God. <laughs> They're gonna be great. Thank you. Folks, we got another big one. Huge. Huge How big? tomorrow. Elizabeth Banks oh. is here, and she's got a new project to tell us and about. And Jill's back with a fan favorite, the list of steals and deals. So please tune in. Have a great Tuesday. Tuesday.
Hey, today all day, we've got a great show for you on this Tuesday morning, including an all day exclusive chat you can only see here. We kick it off with Carson giving us all the buzzy headlines with Pop Start. Best time of the morning. There it is. Time? Pop Start at his coffee. Bam! Thank you, Uncle Al. Appreciate it. Good morning, everybody. Let's get right to it. First up, Princess Diana, a reception at Kensington Palace to remember Diana and thank those who contributed to make a new tribute statue possible set to take place tonight. Pop Start correspondent Molly Hunter is here with all the details. Hey, Molly. <laughs> Hey guys, good morning from a very windy Kensington Palace. That's right, so Kensington Palace says tonight is a private event. We understand that there will be a lot of high profile donors and benefactors there to celebrate the legacy of Princess Diana. This morning, preparations are underway for a party fit for a princess. Months after Prince William and Prince Harry unveiled this statue of their mother in a small, intimate gathering, today a larger private reception postponed because of COVID, a moment to acknowledge those who made the statue possible. This wasn't paid by the British nation. It wasn't paid by the UK government. It was paid by donations and benefactors. Now open to the public, overlooking the sunken garden at Kensington Palace, the statue depicts Princess Diana as a humanitarian, surrounded by three children. Both brothers worked closely with the sculptor to bring their vision to life, reuniting on what would have been Diana's 60th birthday. There had even been some hope that the memory of their mother might heal the rift between them. We all kept our fingers crossed that this was going to be an occasion that would bring the boys together. Those hopes were dashed when the unveiling happened. And then I think people thought, well, maybe October will be the moment they'd come together. And those hopes have been dashed. But today, only one of her sons, the country's future king, will be here to greet Princess Diana's supporters. Harry, Meghan, Little Archie and Lilibet are not crossing the pond for today's ceremony, a sign that all may not be healed. At home in the U.S., Harry and Meghan recently teaming up with the Wall Street firm Ethic after a whirlwind trip to New York City last month. While here in the UK, Prince William focusing on the Earthshot Prize, the star-studded environmental awards over the weekend, speaking passionately about climate change. We need some of the world's greatest brains and minds fixed on trying to repair this planet. Both sons separately doing the kind of work that would make their mother so proud. Now, Carson, of course, big question. Are we going to see those brothers together anytime soon? You heard Daisy McAndrew says there are a lot of crossed fingers on this side of the Atlantic that maybe, just maybe, Harry and Meghan might fly little Lilibet over over Christmas for her very first visit. Carson, I'll send it back to you. Fingers crossed here, Molly. Thank you so much. Over 10 years of hard-hitting journalism. It means a lot on Popstar yes. to get yes. Molly's yeah. uh, professionalism. Yes. That's Matrix That's Award material right there. It? Yeah. Molly Hunter. Yeah, and they have Appreciate Nitwits it. riding behind people yeah. just like and the bike. Here. The guy on the bike is yep. excited yeah. for the story. <laughs> yeah. uh, next up, Mel Brooks, a 95-year-old comedy legend, is back with a new take on one of his classics. Brooks set to write and produce a sequel series to the 81 movie History of the World Part 1. The original film told the story of civilians throughout history with Brooks's classic slap style, uh, slapstick style of comedy. The upcoming eight-part variety series based on the movie will be co-written and produced by Nick Kroll, Wanda Sykes, and Ike Barinholtz. A cast for the History of the World Part Two has yet to be announced, but the series is set to stream on Hulu. 95, writing and no, producing. 95, okay. Yeah. Incredible. Oh. Next up, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The lineup of the star-studded presenters for this year's ceremony has officially been announced, and they are Taylor Swift, Paul McCartney, Drew Barrymore, Jennifer Hudson, Lionel Richie, and Christina Aguilera. They're all going to help to induct the incoming class of Hall of Famers. This year's ceremony will celebrate a number of first-time inductees, including the Go-Go's and Jay-Z and mark the second honor for three other artists, Tina Turner, Carol King, and Foo Fighters frontman Dave Grohl. The 36th mm. annual Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony will take place on Saturday, October 30th. It'll air on HBO, HBO Max, uh. and Sirius XM. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And finally, Hoda, it's all about you. Uh -huh. Yesterday, you were among the honorees at the 2021 Matrix Awards ceremony, uh -huh. an annual event that celebrates the most outstanding female leaders in the field of communications. Our good friend, your close friend, Maria Shriver, was there uh -huh. to present you with the award. And in typical Hoda fashion, you left us with some lovely pearls of wisdom in your speech. If you want something bad enough, say it out loud. A friend once said, even if you whisper it in the bathroom mirror to yourself, one thing I always wanted was kids, and I was afraid to speak it. And one day I just looked at Joel, and I basically said, I want you to think about this for a minute. I want you to take some time. 
because I'm about to ask you something very important. Take a week and think about it. And he looked scared. And I looked at him and I said, I would like to explore adoption with you. And he paused for a nanosecond and said, I don't need a week. I don't need a minute. The answer is yes. So say your dreams out loud. If you speak them, sometimes they do come true. I want a new Ford F-150 wow, Raptor. Wow, God. I want a new Ford. <laughs> I want a new Ford. By the way, Carson, yeah. Carson, Carson, Carson you're so shallow. Yeah. What? Carson, yeah. Carson, yeah. Is it here? No, Carson, sorry. Carson, oh. do you know who the friend was who told me to speak it out loud? Even no. if you whisper it in Oprah? the bathroom mirror. Oh, so Bingo. Uh, well, well, for, a former Matrix winner. That's right. That's right. Oh. That's right. Where's Baby. your Matrix? Where's Popstart's Matrix? The honorable mention is coming. Uh, it's for <laughs> ladies, right? Yeah. It's a ladies. Well, 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 our friend Molly Hunter, the journalist. <laughs> yes. Yeah, journalist. And you can give exactly. the speech to your pickup truck. That would, yeah. that would be I will. I have one written already. I just need the truck. Congratulations, Hoda. Congratulations. That, so awesome. yeah, that was amazing. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Well deserved. Right. Uh, what if, if we want more Popstart? Well, it's a good question, Savannah. There's an answer to that, because I am now hosting a 30-minute Popstart show called Popstart Plus on our streaming channel today all day. You get the latest and entertainment, celebrity news, and some amazing moments from the Today Vault. It is weekdays at 12.30 p.m. You go to today.com to watch, and we invite you to join us today. That's All great. right. Thank you, Carson. Carson. Coming up next on Today Talks in the third hour, the gang goes full on, overheard on third. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. Yes, yes, yes. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Controversy in South Lake tonight after teens posted a racist video. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. My children were told Rosa Parks is dead. You all have to sit in the back of the bus. But when the school board presented its plan, this small town fight ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False is narrative racism. of rampant racism. Shame. This is South Lake, an NBC News podcast. All episodes available now. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. Today in the third hour, it's overheard on third, and the gang shows us an impressive and spooky house just in time for Halloween. Take a look. So excited. We have exhumed overheard on third. <laughs> Not exhumed. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, for Halloween. Well, it's Halloween. Halloween. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, if, so if you're looking to an alternative to your daily hor horoscope, you might want to turn to Noodle the Pug. Mm -hmm. A noodle has captivated TikTok with his daily mood and through his bones or no bones videos. It, it, so it's a kind of a prediction of what kind of day you might have. His owner, Jonathan Graziano, records a video of the 13-year-old dog every morning. <laughs> if he stands up, Poor guy. it's a bones day. What does cause, that mean? Cause, cause for celebration. So you're gonna have a good day if right. he stands up. That's right, but it's a no bones day <laughs> when he flops back over onto his doggy bed. That's when his owner advises viewers not to take any risks. It's like an emotional Groundhog's Day. So here's the thing. Yes. People are so into this. This video has racked up more than 10 million views. Yeah. And people were seriously like, okay, he's up. Okay, I'm going to have a good day today. And he's down. I'm just going to be easy today at work. I'm not going to ask yeah. for a raise. No. Okay. I think gonna... Noodle's just like, can you leave me alone? I know. He's right? like, can you leave me alone? <laughs> He's just, like, just lay down. He's like, I'm there. not a groundhog. That's it, bone. Right. Yeah. Speaking of bones, uh, check out these bones. Alan Perkins decorated his Ohio home for Halloween. It looks like a giant skeleton Whoa. is breaking out of the house. <laughs> Uh, and he said he actually didn't damage his actual roof to make this. He's had an idea for this idea for a few years and finally brought it to life. That Look is at that. unbelievable. I, I love people that go overboard with Halloween. Do you, do you I, I love, we never did, but like I love when I drive by a house or in New York, you know, you, you go by a building or a townhouse and it's just in got place. incredible oh. decorations. So people cool. People are spending more, I think, on, on Halloween decorations. They, than are. they are. Actually on Christmas. We, we live in a, in a building and there's one floor in our building where they go insane that the kids get off the elevator and the kids just start crying 
because it's so scary. Mm-hmm. But I love that. Yes. I, I think that's fun. That's so the Halloween spirit. Up, did you guys decorate a house? Or we did a like little that? bit, but we never went overboard. Well, there yes. was <laughs> decorations, but involved toilet paper. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we did, oh, we did a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, speaking of Halloween, Huffington Post spoke to nutritionists about giving out healthy candy or alternative snacks to trick or treaters. <laughs> it's a bad idea. It's a don't do that. This, don't no apples. No, no, they say depriving kids of candy could actually lead them to binge on candy later in larger quantities. So you know what? I can attest to yes. that in my own house uh-huh. because I have, was a stickler and still kind of am about candy and no right. gum. I right. talked about this. And what's happened is I've created a monster because yeah. then now when, when they, they get it, it yeah. they, go they go crazy. So I think, yeah, slow so, and steady runs the race. You know what was the worst was the, um, the pennies. You get to somebody's oh, house please. and they got like a jar of pennies. It was what's like, that? what? Come what is this? And it's gross. Yeah. What's your worst candy? <sighs> Like one of those like sort of hard rock candies that you just uh, don't even know what it is, and you're like, yeah. uh, like why? why? Can- yeah. Yeah. Are you a fan of the candy corn? The, oh, yeah, I can do a good candy corn. Really? I love candy no, corn. See, that's an oxymoron. There is no good candy corn. Yeah, there is. So you it's don't like candy corn? It's colored wax. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With sugar. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> With it's, sugar. It's the, and by the way, the fun size candy bars. Yes. They're not fun. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, they're fun. You just eat a hundred of them. They're I mean, not, like yeah, but that's not candy, fun. You eat like five candy bars. You know what would be a fun size bar? What? Three times as big as a normal candy <laughs> So there you go. <laughs> that's fun. Trick or just go eat your way in, house. hollow it out, and just yeah. live there. Hey, by the way, uh, we're looking to answer your kitchen conundrums, this time all about Halloween. So okay. go to our third hour today on Instagram or Twitter. Send us your questions, and we're going to try to make cooking this time of year a little less scary. That would be cute. All right. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, it's Tuesday, Tuesday, where we let you pick our outfits for the week. Today, one of our producers helps style us. Don't miss it. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. But when the school board presented its plan, it ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative. Shame. This is Southlake. All episodes available now. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at seven on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back today on Hoda and Jenna. We go unscripted. All right, so uh, this is an interesting topic. So sometimes when a couple splits up, the woman would like to hold on to the name because she wants to. And this is what happened in Kevin Hart's case. Yes. He and his wife uh, got divorced. His ex is uh, Tori. Tori. Yeah, she made headlines because she defended her decision to hang on to his last name. She said, I'm going to be a heart until I decide not to I be. love that. Yeah. She said she's been asked by women why she still holds on to the heart name. Her response? Because it's mine. Yeah, I think that that is an interesting thing. By the way, something so crazy about last names uh, in the beginning, when my parents first got married in Egypt and came here, the way they do it in Egypt is is the, the woman holds on to her family name because how disrespectful to yeah. your father and your lineage yeah. to just say, well, that's gone, now I'm, now yes. I'm this. So you, you hold on to your last name, and that's just the way it is. So when my parents came here many years ago in the 60s, they tried to book a hotel. 
and they had different last names. And they had a rule at that hotel that you could not book a hotel unless you were married. And they said, well, we are married. And they said, well, no, you're not. Look at your last names. So they found it peculiar that when you came here, you immediately took someone else's name, kind of said goodbye to your family in that way yeah. they saw it. And then, so when you think about how sometimes Middle Eastern countries are seen as really backwards, yes. how kind of progressive, progressive that, that is that was. for the yeah, woman to keep her name. It's so interesting yeah. because both of you have, both of us yes. have slightly complicated names. Yes. Yours yes. because people couldn't yes. pronounce it. Yes, five Yes. <laughs> yeah. And mine because, <laughs> yes, because it was Bush. <laughs> yes. And I remember being at, I went to a big public high yeah. school and I was always like, God, please don't say the full don't name. Say. Just say Jenna. Yeah. Don't say the yeah. full yeah. name. Yeah. Yeah. And poor Barbara had oh. it even worse. Because your grandmother. Because she had a double name. But I think it's interesting. You, but when you were, th this is a big question for you because you're getting married to yeah. Henry. And um, I just wondered, like, was there, did you have a moment where you said, well, hold on, I don't know that I want to. No, I have to say, and yeah. I, like, as I've aged, I'm so proud yeah. of my family and yeah. that name, and I'm like, regained it. But as a young, I was a child bride, yeah. as you yeah. will know. <laughs> and as a younger person, it embarrassed me. I didn't want to uh, be out. You know, I was like, I couldn't wait to, to be Hager. Hager. I couldn't wait to call and make a yeah. dinner reservation with a name that nobody knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a teacher, before I got married, I went yeah. by Miss Jenna. Oh, you did? Yeah, I just, yeah. there's something about, but that, that attitude has changed the older I get. Yeah. You know, I think. Do you hyphenate or do you? Well, I was just Jenna Hager and yeah. then I came here yeah. and they were like, but you published two books under yeah, Bush. Bush. Yeah. So you got to go by Jenna it? Bush Hager hey, and yeah. now I'm JBH and yeah, it all works I, out. JBH does work for you, but I do think you're right. It's whatever makes you feel good and right, yes. you know, yeah. to hang on to. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about Angelina Jolie. Yeah. She took her whole, she's got a beautiful group of kids and she took them all to the premiere of her new uh, film. It's called The Emeralds and they all came on the red carpet yeah, and it's kind of fun. Cause you, is that what it, did I, yeah. what I say? The Emeralds? Emeralds, but I was okay with that too. <laughs> All right. Look at her whole family. They've grown up. Yeah, the Zahara stood out. She's in that sparkling silver. That gown, look closely, that was the gown her mom wore in 2014 to the Academy Awards. Oh my god. And gosh. now her daughter is wearing it. So did you know that this is a trend among celebrities? What they're rating that, each yeah, other. Yeah, that kids are wearing oh look their how mom's tall. clothes. I know. Okay. So here's Brooke Shields' daughter, for example, okay. Rowan. What'd she do? She, she wore her mom's 1998 Golden Globe gown to her high school prom. Okay, that's so cute. Okay, Courtney Cox and her daughter Coco, they shared the same dress. Why is everyone the same size? Well, their that's kid? what I'd like to talk that's about. Unbelievable. I'd like to just talk about that for a minute because <laughs> that's my mom is very small. <laughs> And it's so great. she's like, I, I, she didn't have a big wedding, but she's like, I have the wedding dress in case Barbara wants to wear it. <laughs> there was no chance that I was going to squeeze into that wedding dress. <gasps> That's so crazy, though, how these moms and daughters are all so small. small. <laughs> Supermodel Cindy Crawford, her daughter Kaya Gerber, they, they both small? wore one of Cindy's show-stopping bustier looks. Wow. I like to say, imagine me in that. Oh my God. Not pretty. <laughs> Tracy Ellis Ross, she raided oh, her I mom's her closet. Style. Diana Ross. I mean, oh my God. I love her style. Wait, that's a ringer. Yeah. Look at Diana Ross but and look at Tracy Ellis Ross. Tracy Ellis Ross has the great taste. Like, she always looks super cool. She, by the way, and she's, in color. The, she's one of the coolest, yeah. coolest people. So, um, would you raid anybody's closet? Have you ever worn your mom's clothes? Oh yeah, I wear my mom and I. Yeah, we. You share has, her clothes? Well, yeah, because she pick. Well, she picks my clothes, yeah. and often she picks one for her, so we have the same thing. So it's cute. We do. Do y'all ever match? Sometimes, yeah. You go out and you're well, wearing the same outfit as we, your mom. Well, yeah. I mean, it's not like AKA she goes. Laura she, Ashley yeah, from like, the '80s. Like sweaters, like she'll get one for her and one for me. Yeah. And you both wear. We'll both wear. Oh. Right. Is this well, you in the same outfit? No, but you know we like a cold shoulder at our house. Yeah, I and, do know yeah. that. But, but mom, don't you feel like cold shoulders are kind of gone? I think so. You told me they were. You said someone. Uh, yeah. Somebody, somebody told us Somebody that. told us. All right. It's Tuesday's Tuesday, and this is important because... <laughs> we're going to we're going to get someone to help us pick an outfit and we have a very very stylish member of our staff. We adore her. We adore her and she is going to choose what we're going to wear. We all want to dress like Ali Burger, but we don't have no. it. Look, they, look, look at, at Ali. Wait. She's in a jean jumpsuit with way, a jean jacket. And just real quick, this is Ali on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. This isn't like, hey, dress put on something. This is just what she wears. No. So, 
she is our special producer and she's going to help us. And her equally fashionable kids, Joaquin, Valencia, and, and Lucia. Lucia. Yeah, look did at them. Did they pick out their our outfit? Yeah, look how beautiful okay. they are. Did they pick so, out our outfit? This is Allie did. Allie chose. Okay, okay, so this is what Allie chose. Oh, I Let's love Let's talk her about kids. Hoda's. Here are Hoda's okay. outfits, okay? Oh. Downtown. I Julie like a. Brown. Bay Bay. Okay. I like A and I like B. What do you think? I like all, I can't believe she chose something cool for me. I, that's so I mean, unusual. I'd like to see you in C because two two jeans. Oh, oh look here's at you. mine. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. You look cute in all those. So just go to uh, hodaandjenna.com, our Instagram page, and reveal your oh, pick. She's very stylish. Yes. I don't know if we can wear it like Ali. Do you think we can? No. Maybe not. No. It is time for Unscripted, and yesterday was the 51st Annual Matrix Award, which recognizes New York women in communications. And I am so proud because my dearest Hoda Copy was among this year's honorees. Here are some of the highlights. Hmm. Hey guys, welcome to today. It's a Tuesday morning. Thanks for joining us. Oda obviously does a lot. You know, she anchors the Today Show. She has the fourth hour. Hoda does a podcast. Hoda does Sirius XM. I don't know which book she's on. I, I can't even begin to figure that one out. She sews her own clothes. No, I made up the last part. Hoda's story is, is so inspirational because, I mean, she just was up against all odds to even get her first job in television. Here's somebody who literally drove around with a box full of, of audition tapes. And everybody said no. And finally, somebody saying, hey, you know, I like you. I'm going to give you a chance. It's 11 minutes before midnight. I'm Hoda Kotb. She has worked so hard to get where she is, but she never forgets where she's from. Yeah, Hoda does a serious news interview along with the best of them. She's traveled all around the world, and she also has an amazing way of connecting with people. And that's a gift, and that's what great communicators in this business have, being able to draw other people out. And she has that in spades. I know you said your life's going to be purposeful, so mm -hmm. what, what is it going to be? I plan on continuing to magnify this issue. She'll get stuff out of people uh, because it's this kind of, hey, y'all, you know, hey, hey, hey. Hey. Their guard is down, and next thing you know, they're given a hold of the nuclear codes. She had been through breast cancer. She had gone through a divorce. And I think she thought to herself, motherhood is not something that's going to happen for me. And at some point, she just woke up and she said, well, why not me? Hi. Oh, my gosh. Kaylee and Hope love their mama. Whenever she FaceTimes me, they're having fun. They're screaming. There's yelling. There's dancing. She personifies that. It was never too late to, for your dreams to come true. I think Hoda is a testament to allowing things to happen in God's time. Things happen when they're meant to happen. She's somebody who's ever evolving and never satisfied to stop learning. And to me, that is a role model for all women in communications. Hoda, congratulations on your Matrix Award. Your career is inspiring. You've put in the work. And there are no words to express how happy I am for you. It's recognition of all your hard work that, that it hasn't gone unnoticed. And hi, hi, even my cat, Sweet Pea, is acknowledging Hoda Kotb. Congratulations, Hoda. I am so proud of you. And soak it in. And what took you so long, Matrix? Honestly, right? Oh, oh congratulations. That was such a nice, I didn't I'm gonna that. just send you the clips of all the nice things I said. <laughs> no, honestly, that, I guess there that was wasn't time, sweet. but I'll tell you afterwards. Sweet. Sweet you are Thank awesome. You. Thank you so much. Um, and. Yeah, New York Women in Communications, it's a nonprofit and it raises money for scholarships and educational programs, yeah, okay. so that's cool. You should go, yeah. everybody should go right now and see Hoda's remarks at today.com. Today Talks continues after the break. We have an exclusive chat you can only see here on Today All Day. Does the White House think they have an Afghanistan problem or a COVID problem? Do you believe the abortion issue should reflect the will of the people or the will of the elected officials? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. 
We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. But when the school board presented its plan, it ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative. Shame. This is Southlake. All episodes available now. Hey, everybody, it's Hoda Kotb from The Today Show. I am so, so excited to tell you about my new podcast, Making Space with Hoda Kotb. I sit down with some incredible people, and we'll hear some uplifting stories. Listen to Making Space now on Apple Podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back to Today Talks and our exclusive content you can only see here at Today All Day. So we need to confess that since this day's begun, we've eaten a steak dinner. Um, Actually, if you'd like pie. to see something, I took a picture to document <laughs> because this morning in our morning meeting, you hear a little door knock and I thought, who's that? And in comes, I don't know if you can scroll in, which camera should I do it to? A full three course <laughs> meal. And by the third course, I'm talking about her coffee made was delivered to Hoda's door. And I'm like, is she going to eat steak and mashed well, potatoes well, for breakfast? On. You know what happened? They had the cooking segment from, with the New York Times lady, Amanda, and she made this beef uh, stuff, which was yummy. Okay. And, you know, and, and then, then I will <laughs> say, my brain judged, and there was some laughter and photographs. And then once we started kind of talking, what did I do? You know what you, you, know what you are? You're like me. You're like a mindless eater. You don't even know. Because I, then we looked at the plate. And, and the there was beef almost was gone. gone. <laughs> and I think what happens is, and I get this way too when I'm talking, I'm like, and then what? And then I look at the Dorito bag and go like, what happened? I don't happened? even really eat red meat and I didn't have a <laughs> fork. I was just eating the meat with my claws. One beef cube at a time. It was so... Right. You didn't have a Why did we do that? I don't know. Because we do it. And we did it with the, with the pie that was just here. I think <laughs> mindless eating is one thing that I... We could both work on. Last night, since we're confessing, are we? <laughs> yeah, we're here. Okay. So we get these, uh, these ice cream pops um, that I've heard are about those really pops. yummy. <laughs> <They're> really <good. laughs> so Joel was out for a dinner and the kids were asleep. And I was sitting down, and I was finishing up a book, and I was finishing stuff, and I ate one. I was like, oh, well. And then I opened the freezer, and there were two left. I was like, well, and I'm not. You didn't go I up three. I a second. I go up to go to bed, and before I walked upstairs, guess what I did? I you went the, for all I three? I the third one up. I have a problem. I can't stop. Like, and, and the only reason I stopped is because, number one, I was feeling sick, and number two, there were none left in the freezer. Well, and also your children are going to come down, and there's going to be one for two kids. And they always go, what's this wrap? They're so good at finding wrappers. Like, <laughs> did you eat that? Or you smell like chips. I was like, See, oh. I'm not the person. I don't normally act like that in my own home. Don't? I don't know if it's like because I'm hiding Why? from Henry after <laughs> yeah. 27 years yeah. of marriage or what. But Henry's that person, and you hear, like, the kids be like, shaming him. They're like, oh, you know, daddy's daddy's going to eat all our candy later. Like, hide the candy from daddy. You know, and I'm like, thank God that's not me. Wait, have you girls picked their uh, Halloween costumes oh, yeah. yet? Speaking of candy. Um, Mila's going to be a pop star. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. That's cute. Does she um, like to sing for real? Yeah, she does. Oh, she does? Yeah, she plays, she does guitar. For real? On Mondays. Yeah. She has a guitar? Okay. She has a guitar cute. that Randy Travis gave her. What? I know. When I interviewed Does them. she know like what a big I deal I play the that music is? of Randy oh, Travis to her constantly oh, so she understands. Okay. But and then um Poppy's gonna be Glenda the Good Witch. Okay, cute. Which will be cute. And, and Hal's how? gonna be Elvis. <laughs> Why is Hal gonna be Because mommy because? gets to pick the costume. <laughs> <laughs> I only got a few. And are you years and left. Henry gonna do it or are you um, guys? Yeah, I think well Mila wants me to be a pop star. Too. Okay, so you'll go with her. But and what about I mean, Henry? And he's every year he picks like a hat from <laughs> the closet and he's like, This year I'm a <laughs> You know, like work at Starbucks. I'm like, well, that doesn't really work because that's, we'll see. That's good. Okay, yeah. that'll be fun. And I wonder what about what, you? Um, we're doing like um, Unicorn for Haley, Rainbow for Hope. They want to do those, and Joel and I. It's will be basically inside Hoda Copy's brain. <laughs> <laughs> you should call that inside Hoda Copy's brain. But somebody needs Unicorn, be. Rainbow, Sunshine. By the way, here's the thing about life. Everyone was like, you know, all these Halloween movies are so scary yeah. and all that stuff. No, thank you. No, honey. No, thank like, you. This is it. Whatever comes in goes out. 
whatever and comes when in, it goes, goes out, out it doesn't go out the way food yes. does and oh god <laughs> anyway that's it for this episode of today talks keep watching for more of today all day if you really want to you probably don't we don't blame no. you we get it bye <laughs> okay Good morning, welcome to today. Good morning, everybody. This is